Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Welcome to Waterbury, Connecticut. It's this afternoon live from Municipal Stadium, live on the CACC network, and live on YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. Your Post University Eagles 0-2 host the Bentley University Falcons, also 0-2, out of the NE10. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone across our multiple networks and platforms. I'm Jeff Nelson here for all of your Post Eagles home football action. Last Saturday, the Eagles and the Lincoln University Lions played an entertaining, sloppy mess of a football game for three quarters, where a little bit of everything happened. The Eagles themselves blocked a punt for a safety, blocked an extra point, blocked a 30-yard field goal, a return it for a touchdown. They had an 80-yard kickoff return to the five-yard line and an interception return for a touchdown. Despite all of that, the Eagles trailed 36-32 to after three quarters, thanks in part to defensive touchdowns and three TDs, and 197 yards receiving by CIAA Player of the Week Malachi Langley, who now leads NCAA Division II with five receiving touchdowns and 300 slog. The clock and the ball just totally slowed it down. They added two rushing TDs and defeated the Eagles 48-32. to That was last Saturday. Freshman Emmanuel Higgins returned the block field goal and had the interception return for a touchdown. His first two collegiate touchdowns. Junior Isaiah Rush had a seven-yard TD reception on the last play of the first half. And Christian Sheehan had a 34-yard field goal, his first field goal of the season. For the visitors from Massachusetts, Bentley, they're coming off a pair of home one-point losses, 20-19 versus Westchester in week one, and last week a 14-13 loss to the University of New Haven. Graduate Tejan Vassar broke a school record with a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, while senior Mason Campbell booted two field goals for all of the Falcons' scoring. Graduate quarterback Mark Wade was 12 for 28, 115 yards and three interceptions, while also producing 96 yards on the ground on 14 carries. Both teams come into this game looking for their first win of the season. The Eagles are still looking for their first win in program history, currently carrying the fourth longest losing streak in the nation at the Division II level at 13. This will be the last time these two teams play each other as non-conference opponents as the Eagles will be joining the NE10 Conference for the 2024 football season. This, like all football Saturdays, will be a fun one, and I promise you it will. We'll be back in 30 seconds with the starting lineups, national anthem, coin toss, and all of today's football action live from Waterbury, Connecticut on the CACC Network and now on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. You're listening and watching the Post University Football on the CACC Network and YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. We are back. Thank you again for joining us on the CACC Network and at YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. I'm Jeff Nelson bringing you the starting lineups brought to you by Post University, offering online, hybrid, and on-campus degree programs to meet your needs. For you, Post is personal. For more information on all of our degree programs, to visit campus or to apply, go to post.edu. That's post.edu. For the visitors from Bentley University in Waltham, Massachusetts, 0-2 on the season and coming off a 14-13 loss last week to the University of New Haven. Their starting offense on quarterback, number nine, Mark Wade, graduate 6'2", 220 out of Cortland, Ohio. Running back, number 22, Vinnie Holmes, senior 5'10", out of Mansfield, Massachusetts. The tight end is Navon Reed, junior 6'4", 235 from Brockton, Massachusetts. Three wide receiver set will have number three, Jonathan Oriaki, 6'205", out of Swampscott, Massachusetts. Number 18, Jake Tarantino, graduate 6'1", out of Clark, New Jersey. And Jack Ford, junior 6'2", 190, out of Medford, Massachusetts. The fatties up front, offensive tackle Mike Butro, sophomore 6'2", 275, out of Worcester, Mass. The guard, offensive guard on the right side, number 52, Quincy Plummer, 6'3", 287, out of Brockton, Massachusetts. He's a junior. The center is Aaron Sousa, senior 5'11", 275, out of Lexington, Mass. The left guard is Phil Keckling, senior 6'4", 305 out of Wayland, Mass. And the right tackle is 78 Joe Lociato, sophomore 6'3", 285 out of Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. 
Head coaches, Sag Stacker, assistant coaches, C.J. Scarpa, Scott Boyle, Mike Landers, Miles Ailes, Jeff Moore, Pat McGowan, Travis Lissett. Your Eagles, Simon Burkett gets to start. The graduate student out of Spokane, Washington, 6'3", 190. The transfer out of Eastern Washington University. He was 10 for 25 last week, 118 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Running back is Isaiah Emanuel, scored a touchdown in back-to-back -back games now, Isaiah Emanuel has. A junior running back out of Providence, Rhode Island, 5'10", 185, wears number eight. Three wide receivers, Drayvon Yeldell, number five, junior wide receiver out of Waterbury, Connecticut. Jermaine Tillery, number two, sophomore wide receiver out of Trenton, New Jersey. And Josh Tracy, number 19, sophomore wide receiver out of Avon, Connecticut. The tight end is Ethan Brown, number 88, sophomore, tight end 6'3", 235 out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the offensive line is Reese Hadika, number 79, graduate offensive lineman, 6'5", 250 out of Fairhaven, Vermont. Colin Owens, freshman offensive line, 6'6", 290 out of Watertown, Massachusetts. One of the captains, offensive lineman Nick Moose plays center. C73, junior offensive line, 6'5", 300 out of Rahway, New Jersey. And rounding out the line is Colby Lawrence, Warson Rice, number 66, sophomore offensive line, 6'5", 255 out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Head coach is Adam Schultz, defensive coordinator Ross Raganisi, offensive line Patrick Miller, secondary John Svatek, tight ends Hugh Villicus, assistant coaches Michael Epstein, Taj Lowe, Chris Nugel, and Dion Small. For the O in two independent post-university Eagles, we will now rise for the playing of the national anthem. Our national anthem live here in Waterbury here at Municipal Stadium. We thank you for joining us on all of our networks and platforms. Or if you're here live in the stadium, we thank you for putting us on your mobile device and listening to us here. I'm Jeff Nelson again on the CACC Network and YouTube.com at, post, at Go Post Eagles. We get ready for both teams to come out and do the coin toss. We remind you, Eagle fans, fall sports are underway and soon fall will give way to winter sports, and what better way to support your Eagles than with university clothing or branded items? I mean, honestly, what better way to get some uh, post-university swag than to go to posteagles.com, click on the fan section on the right-hand side, click on school store for all of your post-university gear, anything and everything post-university Eagles. You can also visit this campus store in the Lieber Student Center on campus. They're open Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Our next broadcast, not that we're getting too far ahead of ourselves, will be the next home game, Saturday, October 28th, versus Southern Connecticut State University here at Municipal Stadium. Pre-game 1245, kickoff at 1, Eagles at 1. The Eagles will go on a four-game road trip following this one. They're at St. A's next week, St. Anselm. 3.30 kickoff, they're at Fairmont State the week after that in West Virginia, 2 o'clock kickoff. October 7th, they're at Pace for a noon kickoff. <laughs> then a bye week, and then a the last of the four-game road trip at Franklin Pierce at 1 o'clock on October 21st. Once again, our pregame brought to you by Post University and its 21 NCAA Division II athletic programs from volleyball to baseball to hockey. There is something for everyone to enjoy, whether a student, a parent, or a fan. For more information on Post University athletics, scores, and upcoming schedules for all of your favorite teams, please go to posteagles.com. That's posteagles.com. As we await the teams to take the field, 
Eagles looking to get a little bit better on the offensive side of the ball. Again, last week a wacky game. If you were uh, happy to join us on the stream or were here in person, you saw things you don't often see. Uh, even at the Division two and three levels in, in a college football game, you had a blocked punt for a safety, a blocked extra point, a blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown, an 80-yard kickoff return, and a interception return for a touchdown. That was all just on the Eagles' side of the football. Captains have now come out. The uh, Bentley Falcons have come out to one side of the field. The Eagle captain, Simon Burkett, number 13 quarterback. Nick Moose, number 52 uh, center. Number one, Eddie Krivka, the middle linebacker out of Beacon Falls, Connecticut. And Jaden Fleeting, the sophomore safety out of Windsor, Connecticut. Captains approaching the field for Bentley, number 21, Salvatore Lupuli Jr., number 18, Jake Tarantino, number 2, Matthew Severance, and number 1, Brett Pullman, the four captains for the Falcons. Everybody shaking hands at midfield. Referee giving some instructions to both teams as we await the coin flip. Always one of the most intense parts of the football game is that coin flip. Fortunately, we don't have the official mic, so we don't have a way to hear all the exciting action that he is providing to them. And out come the Eagles now from the locker room. Looking to break the fourth longest losing streak in the nation at 13. Referee is still talking to the four officials as we await the coin flip and the decision of who is going to get the ball to start the game. Wind is going to play a factor here in this game, 14 to 20 miles an hour blowing out of the northwest. Basically what that means is left to right on the field, but it is swirling in the air. So there are times it looks like it's going across the field. Eagles win the flip. They have deferred to the second half. The Eagles will go left to right. And it looks like Bentley's going to get the ball to start the game as the Eagles win the coin flop and defer. So to start the game, the Eagles will have the wind. Bentley will go into the wind and will receive the ball. With the coin flip, with the decision and everything that has occurred, we're now ready for football time in Connecticut. Our favorite time of the week when two teams battle on the gridiron here. And the opening kickoff is always brought to you by Post University, offering online hybrid and on-campus degree programs to meet your needs. For you, Post is personal. For more information on all of Post degree programs to visit campus or to apply, go to post.edu. That's post.edu. Eagles will play defense first and will kick the wind. The official weather forecast, 66 degrees, partly cloudy, windy with the remnants of Hurricane Lee out to the far east, not really affecting us with with rain, but with a lot of wind. And again, 14 to 20 miles an hour, gusts up to 30, currently blowing left to right. That's the direction the Eagles will go in. Bentley will go right to left, but is swirling up in the air as it's kind of blowing all over the place. Bentley in the road whites with the uh, purple lettering, dark helmets, white pants, eagles in their home grays with the orange lettering, and dark purple helmets. Back to kick is Adam Kane, the freshman out of Newcastle, United Kingdom, to start, and the ball is kicked off in the air and nicely kicked back all the way to the goal line, received by number 14, Andres Andular. He makes a spin move and is tackled nicely and quickly at the 17 yard line by number 89, Jalen Russell, the freshman wide receiver out of South Plainfield, New Jersey. Good kick for Adam Kane, Aiden Kane, excuse me, Aiden Kane. Six foot 199 out of Newcastle, United Kingdom. And out come the Bentley offense. 
which scored 19 and 13 points respectively in a pair of one-point losses. Their quarterback is Mark Wade, graduate quarterback 6'2", 220, out of Cortland, Ohio. Handoff, run on the ground, nice move to the 20, 25, 30, he's gone. He handed the ball off to Vinnie Holmes, and he's broken away, and he might make it all the way to the end zone. He's going to get taken down at the 10-yard line. He broke on the right side and just kept running 72 yards for Vinnie Holmes, brought down by Jaquin Wembley, who saved the touchdown and ra ran him down, similar to how Brees Hall of the Jets got ran down last week against the Bills, but not the opening play the Eagle defense wanted to see, a 72-yard run, and they're first and goal from the nine. Snap to Wade, Wade looks to the corner, throws it, caught, touchdown. Rashawn Bradford, the junior wide receiver out of Rahway, New Jersey, caught a nine-yard pass in two plays, 82 yards. The Falcons are on the board, it's 6-0. A clinical offense, 72 yards on a run, nine yards on a pass, and just like that, two plays, 81 yards. The Falcons are on the board, 6-0. As now the kicker, Mason Campbell, 6'2", 210, out of Naples, Florida, looks to add on the extra point into the win. Snap, held, spot, kick up, good, and it's 7-0. 50 seconds into the first quarter. So Campbell, who is now five for five on extra points, and Mark Wade gets his third touchdown pass of the season. Bradford makes his first touchdown catch of the season. That's his seventh catch overall. And Wade, who had been 28 for 56 on the season, 251 yards, now up to 260, and just over 50% completion percentage, has three touchdowns with four interceptions on the season. Again, two plays. 82 yards in 46 seconds of game time. Not what the Eagles needed to start this game. And again, the Eagles have been chasing points. Part of the w reason you get into one of these losing streaks is you're always chasing points. They defer on a kickoff, give the ball to Bentley. Bentley goes right down the field on two plays, 80. Two eighty. Well, officially two plays, 82 yards. So they're saying 70 three yards on the run and nine yards on the pass. Back to receive for the Eagles is Jermaine Tillery and Josh Tracy. To kick off will be Mason Campbell from the 35 yard line into the wind. So not sure they're standing at their five and 10 respectively. Not sure the ball is going to get there, but we'll see how far the senior kicker can get it. Campbell approaches the ball and kicks it off right down the middle and gets caught up in that wind. It's going to die at the 15 where it's taken by Tillery. 15, 20, makes a spin move to the outside, 25, 30. He gets to about the 33, and the ball comes out, and I think he, I think Bentley got it. Nope, the Eagles managed to get back on it. Fumbled the ball. Not sure who got back on that ball, but uh, an Eagle player managed to do it, preventing a disastrous start for the Eagles. And 58 seconds in, the Eagles will have the ball first and 10 at the 32-yard line, going left to right as you look at your screen. Twins receivers to the right. A more of a Bunch formation to the left. Isaiah Manuel to the quarterback's right. Fakes the handoff, rolls to the right. Burkett looking for somebody, throws it nicely to Tillery who caught it at the 41 yard line. Just might be enough for a first down. They're gonna mark it at the 42. Let's see if they give it to him. It's closer right on that line. It is a first down. Nice rollout by Burkett and hits Tillery on a nice rollout to the right for a first down for Tillery, that is his 10th reception of the season. He's the team's leading receiver. For Burkett, 25 for 59, five interceptions, one touchdown of the season. Nice pass to start his game off. Hands the ball off to Tillery on the jet sweep this time, but he's gonna get mauled in the backfield and lose. 
lose close to 10 yards. It looks like he gave all 10 yards back. Let's see where they officially mark forward progress. <coughs> it's going to be at the 34, so a loss of eight. Second and eight. As several Falcons in the backfield on a jet sweep, not full. Number 99 amongst them, Herve Shambia. Shibamba, excuse me, senior defensive lineman, 6'2", 290 out of Naugatuck, Connecticut, so a homecoming for Shibamba. <coughs> First and 10, one receiver left, three to the right. Manuel offside looking for the screen. He ends up fumbling the ball, and I think the Eagles jump back on it again as Burkett was hit again. Recovered by the Eagles. Looked like Christian Collin got back on top of it, but the Eagles going backwards after the first down play. First and 10 Falcons at the one after the 70 yard punt by Christian Sheehan. One receiver left, one receiver right, two tight ends and running back Holmes next to Wade and then a jump. Let's see if it's offense or defense. No real penalty if it's the offense, but five free yards if it's the defense for the Falcons. Let's see who's going to get called on. It's offsides on the Eagles. And that'll move the Falcons out of the shadow of their own goal post to the six. Look like 55 Kwaku Agaman jumped, the defensive lineman out of East Windsor, Connecticut. So now first and five. <coughs> and smart play there by the senior quarterback to get the defense to jump. Same formation, first and five. Fake the hands off to Holmes. Looks deep down the left sideline. Looking, looking, it is dropped. It was in the hands of Lopes Jr. for a moment. But good defense to knock the ball out of the hands by Emmanuel Higgins, who had a punt, who had a interception return for a touchdown last week and returned the missed field goal as well. Second and five, one receiver left. Tight formation with the running back next to the quarterback, Wade. He hands it to Holmes this time. It goes up the middle, and this time the Eagles stop him after a gain of about three. <coughs> and it'll bring up third and two. Call it two and a half at the nine-yard line for the Falcons, as this time they bottled up Holmes after his first run went for 73 yards. Third and two, one receiver left, that's Tarantino. One receiver right, that's Oriaki. Holmes behind Wade in an offset eye. 
Hands the ball off to Holmes again. Tries to go up the middle. Fighting, but I think the Eagles might have stopped him about a half yard short of that first down. A pick pile at the 11, and the Falcons are going to be short. Good job by the Eagle defense to get him the fourth down. They're a good yard short. And the Falcons are going to have to punt. Agamemnon. Agamemnon in there again. This time it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth and down. Let's see. They will go for it. Hand the ball off. He gets a first down and much more. And he's still up and tackled a risky play by the Falcons to go for it on fourth and a half yard at the 10-yard line. But they did. They gave it to Holmes. He got 10 yards, and that's a first down for the Falcons. A risky play for a team that already went down the field for a touchdown to open the game, up 7 to nothing. That's not a play you typically do up 7 to nothing. But they went for it. They risked it, and they got the first down. Dylan Gordon in the backfield now with Wade, first and 10. Two receivers left, one to the right. Snap to Wade. He looks to the right, throws to the right, gets a man open and caught for nine yards. That's number three, Jonathan Oriaki, the junior out of Swamp Scott, Massachusetts. <coughs> and that'll be second and close to two. Tackle by Elijah Osei, the nation's leader in solo tackles. Hand off to the fullback this time who gets to the corner. He'll get the first down after about three yards. That was Dylan Gordon, 6'2", 215 out of Foxborough, Massachusetts. First and 10, Falcons at the 35-yard line. I mentioned before, Elijah Ose O'Shea, O'Shea, excuse me, Sophomore defensive back out of Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Number one in the nation in solo tackles as the Falcons hand off again to Gordon, who will get about four and a half yards, uh, just shy of the 40. So four yards for Gordon, and that'll be second and five and a half at the 40-yard line. Osei coming into this game has 17 solo tackles tied for first in the nation. One receiver right, one to the left. Gordon in the backfield, two tight ends for the Falcons on second and five. Snap back, throw again, caught right here, right in front of us at the 49-yard line. That's a first down as Oriaki caught that one again from Wade. And they've matched up twice in this drive. Excuse me, on this drive. And it'll be first and 10 from the 49-yard line of the Falcons. Holmes back on the field. Two receivers right, one to the left, near side left, as Wade will call for the ball. Fake the handoff to Holmes and roll to the right where there are no Eagle defenders at the moment. And he gets to the Eagle 45 before taking down at the 42 on the quarterback keeper. Lots of space on that far side of the field and taken down just, I think, just shy of the first down. So second and one. Taken down by number 12, Tidian Brown, the defensive lineman. Three receivers left. Running back, Lopes to... Wade's right. He's back to pass. Looks over the field. Sends it up the middle. It's caught by number 14. At the 35, makes a spin move and then is gang tackled by Edit Krivka and several others. That's 14. Jack Ford, 6'1", 190 out of Medford, Massachusetts. He made that catch over the middle for the first down. And the chains will move again. 6.35 to go in quarter number one. And the Falcons are driving on their second possession leading seven to nothing. Wade looking over to the sidelines to determine the play. One receiver right, one receiver near side left. On the far side of the field, though. Out comes Holmes to be a running back. They'll go two tight ends set with both tight ends on the right side of the field. In motion, fakes the handoff, then gives the handoff to the running back, Holmes, who goes up the middle and still is pushing through a pile with 75 in front of him blocking. That's a first down as Holmes kept his legs moving, but had Phil Keckling, the junior offensive lineman out of Wayland, Massachusetts, creating a hole after faking the handoff to Lopes 
on the jet sweep. The Falcons go to first and 10 again as Holmes using that size, low gravity, 5, 10, 200, just pushing the pile. Getting another Eagles first down. Two receivers left, none to the right with two tight ends over there. Gives the handoff to Holmes again, who goes on the right side where all the beef is and cuts up into the middle and is tackled by a myriad of players led by Jaden Fleeting, the sophomore out of Windsor, Connecticut. But gained, let's call it four, to make it second and six at the 20-yard line as the Falcons enter the red zone for the second time in this quarter. Second and six, ball at the 20. They need a little past, a little close to the 14 to get a first down. Three receivers left, one to the right. Holmes right next to Wade. He fakes the hand off to Holmes, looks over the middle, throws it deep down the left sideline, and it was a pull play there, and it's caught for the touchdown. It looked like some offensive pass interference as Lopes Jr. grabbed a hold of Fleeting but no flags thrown unless I can't see one, and that's a touchdown. It is a touchdown, officially for Abel Lopes Jr. on a 19-yard touchdown pass. That's his first reception of the year, first uh, touchdown reception of the year, mind you. Wade's second of the game, and with 4.40 to go, the Falcons have, in the first quarter, the Falcons have a 13-0 lead with Campbell's extra point to come. Snap, high, spot, kick, up, and no good. It looked like it went wide right, and it did. Again, that wind kind of blowing all over the place, and if you look at the flags, it was actually blowing to the right. So a missed extra point, his first of the year, Campbell, and with 440 remaining in the first quarter, it's 13 to nothing. Falcons, so a sustained drive by the Falcons that time to get points on the board, and it's 13 to nothing. Eagle fans, fall sports are underway, and soon fall will give way to the winter sports. What better way to support your Eagles than with university clothing or branded items? If you want to re represent your Eagle fandom in the nest on campus, around the neighborhood, at home, or on the road, go to posteagles.com, click on the fan section on the right-hand side, then click on school store to grab anything and everything Post Eagles. Use the code SAVE20 at checkout to save 20% on all purchases over $75. Exclusions do apply. That's SAVE20, S-A-V-E, 2-0. All one word to save on purchases 75 and over. Exclusions do apply. You can also visit the campus store in the Lever Student Center on campus. They're open Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. As we get ready for the kickoff, Eagles down 13 to nothing. Ball placed at the 35-yard line. Campbell will be kicking to Tracy and Tillery. Tracy, who took the first kickoff and fumbled, fortunately the Eagles jumped back on it after about a 17-yard return. <laughs> 19-yard touchdown pass from Wade to Lopez Jr. But the big play on the drive, the fourth and one conversion from inside their own 10-yard line. That kept the drive alive and allowed the Falcons to score. Kickoff by Campbell, high up in the air, and the wind just blows it dead. Caught by number 21 at the 22-yard line, and he gang tackled at the 25 before he could get anywhere. That's Nashawn Hill, sophomore running back out of Avenel, New Jersey. As Campbell put a lot of leg into it, but the wind just caught it up in the air, and as it was spinning, he just kept spinning backwards and backwards and went to the Upman Hill versus going to Tillery or Tracy. I'm sorry, the ball is actually at the 26, not the 21. It's caught at the 21, tackled at the 26, first and 10. With two receivers left, one near side right. Eagles going left to right, snap to Burkett, who hands the ball to Emmanuel, trying to go around the left tackle, but he's gang tackled by five Falcons at the 25-yard line, led by number 95, A.J. Norton Jefferson, the 6'2 defensive lineman out of Melrose, Massachusetts. Officially a loss of a yard at second and a offensive play is going backwards for the Eagles after a first and 10 completion on the last drive. Second and 11, one receiver to the right, one receiver to the left, two tight ends, and Emmanuel in an offset eye with Burkett in the shotgun. 
fakes the jet sweep, hands the ball off to Emmanuel up the middle, and he's tackled again by 45, Christian Lanzalato, the senior linebacker, 6'2", out of Rumson, New Jersey, met Emmanuel right at the line of scrimmage, so the Eagles gain a yard, but that just makes it third and ten. <coughs> Eagles try 13, third and ten, 3.30 to go in quarter number one, ball at the 25-yard line, three receivers left, one receiver right. Emmanuel in the backfield with Burkett. Snap to Burkett. Free rusher is 95, and Burkett running for his life. Runs into the referee, tries to throw it into no man's land. That's probably, that might be intentional grounding. It didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, and 95, A.J. Norton Jefferson was through the offensive line in a hurry. Gave Burkett no time to make the play. The pass went incomplete. The question is going to be intentional grounding, and there goes the flag. It's intentional grounding on Burkett as he didn't get it close to the line of scrimmage. Probably got himself out of the pocket, but didn't get it close enough to the line of scrimmage. And that'll be intentional grounding on Burkett and a 10-yard penalty and loss of down. And that'll push the Eagles back further. So five out of the last six offensive plays for the Eagles have gone backwards, and the only one that went forward went forward for about a half a yard. And because he threw it at the five-yard line, that's actually where the penalty takes place, and the Eagles will be punting out of the shadow of their own end zone. Trailing 13 to nothing. And Sheehan, who just had a 70-yard punt, standing on the back of the end zone awaiting the snap. From Michael Gabetti, the freshman linebacker out of New Jersey, who is the long snapper. Snap, back to Sheehan. Big rush, and he gets the ball off again. Some good air under, and again, he'll take an eagle bounce to the 50. His fumble to the 40. Falls down at the 40-yard line, and an excellent punt again. 57 yards on the punt as Lopes Jr., who just caught the touchdown, fumbled the ball. A break for the Eagles after a 58-yard punt. And the Falcons will be first and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Nice job by Sheehan on back-to-back -back kicks to recreate field position. But the Eagle defense, who's been on the field for most of the game so far, has to get a stop and get the ball back, trailing 13 to nothing with 3.02 to go in quarter number one. Wade, Mark Wade for the Falcons, two touchdown passes in the first quarter. Two receivers to the right, bunched together. One to the left, far side. Wade and Holmes standing in the backfield. Wade takes the ball, gives to Holmes, fakes to Holmes, gives to Holmes. Now he comes over here on the near side, gets through a tackle, ends up with about five yards, and is finally taken down by 22. Emir Johnson, the offensive linebacker of Neptune, New Jersey, after a gain of five for Holmes. Fake me out on the handoff. I thought that Wade kept it after Holmes had it, he wasn't sure, so good fake by Wade, credit, faked me out, and I'm standing right here watching it. Second, and they'll call it four from the 46. Trips right, no receivers on the near side. Standing next to Wade is Lopez. Wade, back to pass, looks over the middle, has a wide open Lopez who catches the ball. Let's see if he caught it, they say he caught it, and they say he got one foot in at the 39 yard line. Nobody took Lopez coming out of the backfield. As Lopez plays a little bit of everything, that time he was at the running back position next to Wade. And nobody took him out of the backfield, and he came right up the left side, took a simple little pitch and catch, and caught the ball at the 39-yard line, I believe. Let's see where they officially spot it. But the officials are talking about it, and now everybody's moving backwards. So after an official discussion, they rule it incomplete. It was caught right here on the near side, but all the players standing right where he landed his foot. So thought it was a catch. The official was adamant he made the catch. 
But I guess after a discussion with other officials, they decided it was not a catch. So incomplete. And that'll make it... Should be third down. Should be third and four. Let's see there. Lots of confusion. Should be third and four. Right now the down marker says two. But should be third and four. There, the official on the far on the far side got it right. Moved it to third down. It's third and four now with 212 to go. Massive confusion. Might want to take a timeout just to get yourself better situated. One right receiver right, one to the left. Two tight ends in the formation and Holmes. Here comes Lopez behind. Screen pass behind him. It won't be, it'll be a technically a run and then a nice job tackling there by number 48. Emmanuel Higgins. Technically a handoff because that ball went behind him. So a, so a running play for Lopez. That's a running play for Lopez and a loss of one. They're going for it on fourth down again. Fourth and five, throws it over the middle, caught first down. As for the second time, the Falcons go for it on fourth down. That was caught by 88, Navon Reed. 6'4", tight end out of Brockton, Massachusetts. And the Falcons, I guess, don't like the punt. As they went for it on fourth and five, I don't get the risk with the Eagle offense struggling as it is to keep going for it, but they did it twice. And now have a bunch of receivers on the left and the right on a first down and 10 from the 38. Snap. Straight quarterback draw up the middle for Wade. He gets hit after about a four to five yard gain and goes down. They're officially going to call it six. As Wade goes for six yards on the quarterback draw. Wade, who had 14 carries and 98 yards last week, not afraid to run the ball. He did so there, gained six. Took a hit by him a couple of Eagles to take him down and makes it second and four. Wade with Holmes to his right, looks to the left, throws to the left, caught. That might be out of bounds. Let's see. Nope, they're going to say he's in. Got the foot in. First down catch there to Jonathan Oriaki. And the chains move again with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Falcons don't have to run another play before the end of the quarter. Let's see if they try to get one in going into the wind as they've converted on a fourth down on the second drive and now converted on a fourth down on this drive. Six seconds to go in the quarter. First and ten. They rush the play. A high snap but caught by Wade. Throws it deep down the right sideline. A little bit of a push off and out of bounds. And that'll end the first quarter as he was looking for Lopez. Already has a touchdown in this game. Threw it across the field into the wind. Ball was taken by the wind into the corner. Not sure why they need to rush that playoff. The clock was going to run out before the play clock. But either way, that's the end of one here in Waterbury. With the score, Bentley 13, post nothing. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening and watching the Post University Football on the CACC Network and YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter here in Waterbury at Municipal Stadium where Bentley University leads Post University 13 to nothing. Second quarter brought to you by Post University and this 21 NCAA Division II athletic programs from volleyball to baseball to hockey. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Whether a student, a parent, or a fan, for more information on Post University athletics, news, scores, and upcoming schedules for all your favorite teams, go to posteagles.com. That's posteagles.com. Around the NCAA, number three, Florida State leads Boston College 17 to 10. Penn State leads Illinois. Number seven, Penn State leads Illinois 13 to nothing. Number 14, LSU leads Mississippi State 24 to nothing. And Missouri leads 15, number 15, Kansas State 17 to 14. Second and 10 from the 23-yard line. 
as the tight ends change from right to left. The uh, Falcons going right to left, left to right in this quarter. Excuse me, Wade hands off to Holmes right up the middle, gains, call it five, as Holmes, 5'10", 200, gets low, buries his shoulder pads, finds himself a hole, and it's third and five on the opening play of the second quarter. Bentley going left to right, has the wind in this quarter. Eagles going right to left. We have a third and five. Bentley leads 13 to nothing. And Wade looking back to his bench for the play. Holmes next to Wade in the formation with two receivers right near side, one to the left far side. Snap, fakes to Holmes, looks over, pump fakes, throws it deep into the corner of the end zone, a little far, and that is incomplete. But he had a wide open Jack Ford just overthrew him, this time with the wind. Ball probably took that a little bit, but he had Ford wide open on the near side going into the end zone. That leads to fourth and five. So they're going to go for it again, up 13 to nothing on fourth and five. Interesting call. Again, not that they haven't been successful, just why not take the points on a, a play against an Eagle offense that's been struggling. Snapped away, looks to the left, throws to the left, caught, first down. Simple pitch and catch there with number 18, Jake Tarantino. The wide receiver out of Clark, New Jersey, and that's way too easy on fourth and five. And again, coaching staff clearly knows something I don't because they're three for three on fourth down in this game, leading 13 to nothing. Two receivers right, one to the left. This looks like a setup for a run, but no, he said he rolls to the right. Wade rolls to the right, throws to the right, high, too far for number 11, Jake Bedell. The 5'11 wide receiver out of North Reading, Massachusetts. There's a flag on the play. This might be holding from the rollout. Let's see. It is holding on the Falcons, and the Eagles will push them back off the incompletion. Looked like 78 got the hold. That's Joe Lociato, sophomore offensive lineman out of Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. Either way, an incomplete pass, and it's first and 20. Well, technically, it's first and goal from the 20 with 110 gone here in the second quarter. So first and goal from the 20. One receiver left, one to the right. Bunch formation on the right side with Holmes next to Wade. Wade gives it to Holmes, who goes up the middle looking for a crease, and he gets six of it back to make it second and, four, second and goal from the 14. As again, Holmes was 5'10", not the biggest running back in the world, but able to find those little holes as the offensive line doing a great job pushing. As the Eagles looking to get off the field, but the Falcons have shown a interest in going for it on fourth down as they are three for three on fourth down in this game. Receivers to either side, Holmes in the backfield next to Wade. Wade takes the snap, fakes the snap, throws it. Quick pass, caught at the five, but a nice hit. But caught anyway by Lopes for 10 yards. Makes it third and goal from the five, and a nice tackle there by Emmanuel Higgins. And third and goal from the five for the Eagles. They've done a good job of picking back up the yardage off the holding penalty. And given their strategy so far, is almost four down territory here as Wade went pitch and catch that time with Lopez. Third and goal from the five, two receivers left, one to the right, Holmes in the backfield. Fade pass into the corner, it is caught nicely, but he says he's out of bounds. As it was caught by Tarantino. Both officials say he was out of bounds, so that'll make it fourth and goal from the five, and again, the Falcons have shown no interest in kicking the ball. So they will go for it here on fourth down and goal, or at least they're setting up that way. Again, two receivers left, one to the right. Holmes next to Wade on fourth and goal. Snap to Wade, high snap, looks over the middle with a pass behind the receiver and the Eagles will get off the field. Good pressure that time by Brown, Tidian Brown, the defensive lineman who got in on Wade and forced him to throw behind Lopez, who's been the primary receiver in this game for the, the Falcons so far. And the Eagles will get off the field. They'll have 95 yards of field to get some points, but they get off the field trailing 13 to nothing and maybe can build a little momentum, finally stopping a fourth down as the Falcons, despite 
Campbell's record as a kicker. Seem very content for just going for fourth downs. Snap, handoff to Emmanuel as the Eagles play offense now. And Emmanuel, I'm sorry, that was actually Nation Hill who got stopped at the line of scrimmage. And then some pushing and shoving, some frustration from the Eagle offensive line. After the Eagles gained no yards on that one. Stopped primarily by Nick Pucciello, the linebacker out of Acton, Massachusetts. He was the first one in on that play. Hill behind Burkett in the shotgun. One receiver left, one to the right on second and 10. Hand off to Hill again who tries to go up the middle and sees a wall of white jerseys. Maybe got a half yard if that, but I don't think he got much as Hill went straight and saw a wall of white jerseys, tried to veer to the right and they caught up to him. That was led by 58 that time, JT Roberts, the senior out of Malvern, Pennsylvania. E the last Eagle eight offensive plays have had two positive plays for a half yard and six negative plays. The Eagles have to do something to get this offense moving to take the pressure off the defense. So they've had one first down in this game so far. Snap to Burkett who hands off the hill. He didn't want to hand it off to Hill. And then Hill gets gang tackled at the two after a loss of three. Let's just say 95, the first one in A.J. Norton Jefferson on that gang tackle. And that'll set up a punt this time into the wind by Christian Sheehan, who's had two punts of 70 and 58 yards respectively in the first quarter going in, going with the wind. Now he's going into the wind. And number four, Abel Lopez Jr. standing at the 38 yard line of the Eagles to receive this punt where Sheehan is standing on his own end line. Nine plays for the Eagles now. 10 plays for the Eagles, one a first down 10 yard pass, two runs of a half yard forward and six negative plays. Snap to Sheehan, takes the ball, gets it to the right, it goes up in the air and it'll die at the 19 yard line. So there goes the average. 70 yard punt, 58 yard punt and 17 yard punt for Sheehan. Again, the wind blowing right in his face. He tried to get it low and out to the right, but the ball just got carried in the wind. As again, it's swirling. It looks like it's blowing left to right, but higher up in the air, you can see the trees across from us. You might not be able to on the camera view, but the trees across from us are swirling. And the wind is actually kind of blowing to that side of the field, the far side of the field. That's where the, extra, the missed extra point went and that punt. So a 17 yard punt for Sheehan. Actually, they're going to call it 14 yard punt officially. And that'll give the Falcons first and 10 at the 15. Snap, handoff to Holmes, fake, throws over to the far left side of the field. Caught by, looks like that was number three who caught it. That's Jonathan Oriaki for a gain of four, second and six. And again, makes sense to go for it on fourth down, maybe going on this side of the field. What didn't make sense was going on the other side of the field where you're going into the wind. But maybe they figured by punting the ball, the wind is so much of a factor at this point, they just don't want to do it. One receiver left, two to the right, fakes the homes, throws it over here to the tight end, and it's caught and taken down at the 10, so maybe a gain of one. Jaden Fleeting made the tackle on 88, Navon Reed, the junior out of Brockton, Massachusetts, and that sets up a third and four from the 10. 9.15 to go in the second quarter, 13 to nothing. Bentley on two touchdowns, one to Rashawn Bradford, one to Abel Lopes Jr. in the first quarter. Snap, fakes the handoff again, face left, throws it deep down the left sideline, that's gonna go out of bounds. Throwing it to that side of the field where the wind is blowing, so if you're gonna throw it that way, the ball's gonna carry. Again, it's almost like a cross like a diagonal wind. It's not blowing straight from end zone to end zone. It's like blowing from the near side corner in the far end zone to the far side corner in the on the other end zone. So it's like a diagonal type of wind. And that leads to fourth down and four from the 10, and they're going to go for it again. Three for four on fourth down in this game. They just need four. They can get a first down without the touchdown. 
Receiver in motion, high snap, and looks like a false start on the Falcons. will push them back five yards. But the officials are going to talk it over. Let's see. And it's going to be on the Falcons. It's a false start, and out comes the kicking unit to go for a field goal on fourth and nine. So the Eagles avoid having a play run on them on fourth down. A field goal attempt will be from the 22-yard line, so a 32-yard attempt. The snapper is Salvatore Lupoli Jr. The holder is Jake Tarantino. Mason Campbell, the kicker out of Naples, Florida, a 32-yard attempt who's missed an extra point in this game already. The snap, the spot, it's good, it's clean, it's up, and it is looks like wide right. Nope, they're going to say it's good. It looked wide right, but I guess they're calling it good from this angle. Again, tough to see from this angle, but it did look a little wide right, but they'll call it good. They're there, I'm over here. So we'll say field goal good, 32-yard field goal by Campbell. That makes it 16 to nothing. Falcons with 8.33 to go in quarter number two. So the Eagles somewhat hold. They avoid the touchdown. And we'll get the ball on a kickoff, trailing by 16. here in the first half. So the Eagles looking to get some offense on the board have really struggled. 10 plays, one 10 yard first down, two half yard rushes and seven negative plays so far. Offense has to do a little bit better here. Kent State leads Central Connecticut State 21 to nothing. Boise State 21-6 over North Dakota at halftime. Illinois has gotten on the board, trails Penn State, number seven Penn State, 13 to seven, and Mississippi State's gotten on the board at halftime. They trail LSU, 24 to seven. Tracy and Tillery back to receive the kickoff from Campbell. They're both standing on their own five yard lines. Wind again, swirling, blowing at the back of Campbell, but swirling, and then that ball's up in the air, and that's gonna get to the end zone where the Eagles wisely let it go and deep in the end zone at that. And the Eagles will take it first and 10 at the 25 yard line. Eagles go on a four game road trip after today. They're at St. A's next weekend, the 3.30 kickoff at Fairmont State in West Virginia on the 30th, 2 p.m. kickoff at Pace University on October 7th, a noon kickoff and at Franklin Pierce on October 21st, a one o'clock kickoff, their next home game and our next broadcast will be Saturday, October 28th versus Southern Connecticut State University here at Municipal Stadium, pregame 1245, kickoff at 1 o'clock. Two receivers right, one running back next to Burkett. It goes back to pass with a pocket this time, throws it deep down the right sideline. It is caught by Tillery, who makes a fancy catch around the defensive back, Renee Nunez. Nunez was watching it, but Tillery makes a play, and there's an offensive play for the Eagles. Gets out of their own territory for the first time today on a 28-yard reception to Jermaine Tillery. The Eagles' top receiver, his 11th catch of the season, and good play there and a good pocket for Burkett to throw from. First time today he's had a really solid pocket. Now here's the jet sweep to Tillery. Tries to get around the edge. He does to the 45-43. That's about a five-yard gain. And the Eagles with back-to-back -back offensive plays moving in the correct direction have second and five and a little bit of momentum then the crowd getting on their side a little bit good play there by the eagles second and we'll call it four technically to give give him six as tillery rushed the ball after re after the 28 yard reception tillery who is second on the team in rushing gained to Burkett with a pocket for a second. He throws it to the left side, a push from behind, but I don't think he was gonna get to that ball anyway. Third and five for the Eagles. But again, in the backfield was number 95, A.J. Norton Jefferson, who didn't give Burkett enough time to step into that throw. He had a pocket for a quick second, but by the time he went to step up, there was already Norton Jefferson there. Third and five for the Eagles, looking to get another first down. 
Twins on both sides. Emmanuel in the backfield. Snap to Burkett who quickly looks right. Turns left. Throws on the wide receiver screen to Tracy who falls down, stays up, keeps going and is tackled from behind. If Tracy didn't trip, he might be gone. But they get the first down. Gain 15 yards and 99. Herve Chibamba out of Naugatuck, Connecticut made the tackle on Tracy or he would have been gone. Tracy slipped, stayed up but the slip is what cost him the touchdown because it gave Chibamba an opportunity to get back and get him on the tackle. But first and 10 for the Eagles at the 29-yard line, their first successive drive today. Back to passes Burkett again. Clean pocket, throws it deep down the sideline. It is caught again! Nicely done at the two-yard line. Josh Tracy with a nice catch there, and it's first and goal as the Eagles are in the red zone. For the first time today, a 26-yard pass, and the key to both of these receptions has been a clean pocket for Burkett. Clean pocket, nice throw, first and goal from for the Eagles. Snap, going forward with it, and he's going to be short. He's about, about the half-yard line as Burkett tried to go straight ahead with it, and it's second and goal. Second and goal, Eagles in the red zone for the first time today. Trailing 16 to nothing, 5.47 to go in the first half. Second and goal. Burkett, all 6-3 of them, under center, Moose. Goes back, throws a fade pass deep, and it is caught! Touchdown, Eagles into the nest they go for the first time today, and the Eagles... Josh Tracy gets the touchdown, the sophomore wide receiver out of Avon, Connecticut, a one-yard touchdown, and the Eagles go into the nest for the first time today. It's 16-6. to six. See if the Eagles go for two or they're going to go for the, the extra point. They're setting up for the extra point. Christian Sheehan will go for the extra point, trailing 16-6. to six. snap bobbled kick he tries to kick it it pops up in the air and it's taken by number 50 it's a live ball so bad snap couldn't get it down she didn't try to kick it anyway it popped up in the air about three yards into the wind unless you have some momentum it's just going to get popped up in the air it was taken by number 50 nick pucciello who tried to run it back but got tackled after about five yards so the extra point is no good and the Eagles trail by 10, 16 to 6, but they are on the board. And they do get the ball for the second half, so if they can make a stop here, they will get the ball to start the second half. But going back to the one-yard touchdown catch, that's Josh Tracy, his seventh reception of the season, his first touchdown pass of the, of the season. And for Burkett, who looked good with the pocket clean, made a couple of nice throws there. That's his second touchdown pass of the season for Simon Burkett the graduate student out of Spokane, Washington, the transfer out of Eastern Washington University. So the Eagles get on the board. It's 16-6. to six. Kicking off for the Eagles is Aiden Kane out of the United Kingdom. Back to receive is Jake Bedell and, Andre and Jack Ford for the Falcons. A low-line drive to the up man. Number 40, who catches at the 25, gets to the 30, and then is gang tackled at about the 32-yard line. That was Anthony Golden, the senior linebacker out of Milton, Massachusetts. And the Eagles, with some momentum, after holding the Falcons to a field goal and then driving for their own touchdown, have first... We'll play defense as the Falcons have first and 10 from the 33-yard line. One receiver right, one to the left for Wade, who's got Holmes next to him. Bakes the jet sweep and hands off to Holmes, who goes up the middle and is still going. 45-40 taken down at midfield by Jaquin Wembley, the defensive back out of Jersey City, New Jersey. That's a first down for the Falcons at midfield. As Holmes has been solid they're going to call it the 49-yard line, so one yard shy of midfield 
are the Falcons still in their own territory, first and 10 with 4.54 to go in the first half. One receiver left, one to the right, two tight ends. Hand off to Holmes, who gets tackled behind the line. He'll probably get back to the line technically for no gain. But a couple players in there to make the tackle for the Eagles, led by number 12, Tidian Brown. Good play by Brown. We've called his name a few times today, and it's second and 10 from the 49. Don't forget to stay with us at halftime. We'll go around the post-university sports scene as we do at halftime of every home football game. That's at halftime here on the CACC Network and YouTube.com slash GoPostEagles. Hand off to Holmes again, this time with some blockers, but again, a great play behind the line by 31, Noriano Smith, the freshman defensive back out of East Brunswick, New Jersey. He stepped into the hole for no gain again, and it's third and 10. And if the Eagles can get off the field, this will be a good moment for them. Third and 10 from the 49-yard line. Two good defensive plays on the run. Let's see if they can get off the field here. Trips receivers left. They're going to go five wide receivers. Trips left, two to the right. Wade in the backfield. Be, be curious to see if he quarterback draws from here. Snap to Wade. He's not drawing. He looks over the middle. He throws over the middle. It's caught by number zero, but that's going to be enough for a first down. He's right on the line. Rashawn Bradford caught the ball over the middle, just enough for the 10 yards. Taken down by Edit Krivka, but half yard too late, and the Falcons have first and 10 again, this time at the Eagle 41. 41. Twins left, twins right, Holmes in the backfield, Backley, and it is dropped as he was again looking for Bradford. Quick pass, quick out, but good defense that time by 31, Noriano Smith. Second and 10. From the 41. Play clock running down, 2.45 to go in the second quarter. 16-6 Falcons. Eagles do get the ball for the second half. So a stop here of some kind would be great for the Eagles. Two receivers left. Now a man in motion, fakes the jet sweep, gives to Holmes right up the middle. Good block, and he'll gain about six yards out to the 35-yard line. Tidian Brown was in the backfield, almost had that opportunity. Looked like Edit Krivka made the tackle. And it's third and four from the 35-yard line. Again, probably four down territory here for the Falcons who have been going for it all game long. Time still ticking, 2.25 to go in the first half. One receiver near side right, two to the far side left. Holmes next to Wade. Wade fakes the handoff, runs away from the onset rusher, and he'll get the first down as he rolled to the left. In the backfield was 22, Emir Johnson. But Wade made a little pump fake on him and rolled to the left and got a first down. A gain of about seven to the 29. And it's first and 10 Falcons at the 29 yard line. He went out of bounds. So the Falcons taking their time. Don't want to give the Eagles the ball back here in the first half. Want to score and get off the field. But if the Eagles can hold, they'll get the ball to start the second half. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Holmes, the running back, gets faked the ball. Wade has the ball. He goes off to the left side. He'll gain a few yards, goes over the linebacker. Well, technically defensive back, Elijah Osei, he gained five. Call it six for Wade, not afraid to run the ball. And it's second and four, but down on the play is 65, Brendan Dowling, the offensive lineman from Lexington, Mass. He walks off the field gingerly. And I think somebody called a timeout. Well, just enough time to get him off the field. Hopefully he's okay. He's been able to go off on his own power but hobbled off anyway, and that's a second and, we'll call it four and a half for the Falcons at the 24 yard line. Receivers to each side bunched, one behind the other, and Holmes next to, and then one of the defensive linemen jump, but they're pointing at number 70. Let's see if this is offsides or false start. It is a false start. 
They got Jake Jackson, sophomore out of South Hadley, Massachusetts, jumping early. So second and four becomes second and, well, second and four and a half becomes second and nine and a half at the 29-yard line. And Eagles get a break there. 132 to go in the first half. Twin trips receivers right, one to the left. Holmes next to Wade to his right. Snap, fakes the handoff, looks over the middle, looks deep down the left sideline. He's throwing it deep down the left sideline. It is too far again. And again, that's three or four times now Wade's tried to make that throw and has overthrown. This time the receiver, Jack Ford, too far. And it's third and 10 for the Falcons. At the third and nine and a half, we'll say, at the 29-yard line. They need just over the 20 to get the first down, third and nine and a half. Wind is swirling. If you look at the trees directly across from us, they're just spinning like crazy. Two receivers right, tight formation to the left. He gives the handoff to Holmes over on left tackle, and Holmes is going to get taken down. He might have got the first down. He uh, looks to be a yard short. So fourth and one from the 20. Fourth and one from the 20, and again, this is where the Falcons like to go. Clock ticking away, just over a minute to go in the first half. Fourth and one. One receiver right, one receiver left. Timeout. Looks like an official's timeout for a moment. Not sure what this is for or why. He's down at the 20. He's got to get past the 20. It's fourth down. He's got it. It's fourth down. They just changed the play clock to third down. It's fourth down. It is absolutely fourth down. They've changed the play clock to third down. It is absolutely fourth down. Two runs and a, and a deep pass down the sideline. There was the run by the quarterback. There was the run by Holmes. And then there was a throw down the right sideline. That's three plays. It's fourth down. The officials seem confused. They changed the, play, the down clock to third down. It was two runs and a pass. It should be fourth down. Even Bentley knows it's fourth down. And finally, they get it correct. Coach Adam Schultz ran on the field to yell at the officials to explain the three plays. Even Bentley knew it was fourth down, but they weren't going to get the down back. So fourth and one, back to where we started. One receiver right, bunch formation with all linebackers and tight ends, and Holmes next to Wade on fourth and one. Snap to Wade, hands to Holmes, tries to go up the middle. He gets the first down and about a yard and a half more out to the 18-yard line with 49.5 seconds to go in the first half. <coughs> twin receivers right, twin receivers to the left as the clock is now running. Holmes switches sides, goes to the right of Wade as he awaits the snap in the shotgun. Snap to Wade, who looks over the middle, looks. What's interesting about when Wade looks over the middle is there's no receiver there. Both of the receivers were on the right side. But a whistle. Let's see what the call is. With 38-6 to go, the officials haven't exactly had the best quarter here. They've changed their minds a couple of times. They've been wrong a couple of times. Let's see. Officials now talking to Bentley coach Thacker. Timeout, Bentley. So, so the call. So they've called off delay of game on Bentley, is the call. And then they've called the timeout following that. So first and fifteen now from the twenty-three. 38 seconds to go, timeout Bentley. Don't forget to stay with us in the first half intermission, well, the halftime intermission. 
But we'll go around the Post University sports scene as we always do here on the CACC Network and YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. Florida State leads Boston College 17 to 10 at halftime. Penn State 16 to 7 over Illinois at halftime. LSU 24 7 over Mississippi State start of the third quarter. Kansas State Missouri tied at 17 and Louisville leads Indiana 21 to 7 in the third quarter. First and 15 after the timeout. One receiver right, one receiver left. Holmes next to Wade to his left. Snap, fakes to Wade, fakes the throw to the left. Now rolls to the right does Wade. Several Eagles chasing him. Wade tries to get to the corner. He does. He's still moving and then taken out at about the 15-yard line by 99, Andre Blank. Defensive lineman out of Franklin Square, New York, but he's out of bounds as well. So second and eight with 29.5 seconds to go in the first half. Eagles would do great to hold him to a field goal attempt on second and we'll call it actually seven. Two receivers left, two to the right, Holmes to Wade's right in the shotgun formation. Second and seven. Snap to Wade, fakes to Holmes. Holds, looks over the middle, gets flushed out of the pocket and is rolling, and then it avoids a tackle. Wade looking for the end zone. He's taken down at about the two. It's a first down. First and goal. Timeout Bentley with 19 seconds to go. Wade avoid the... Sack flushed out of the pocket, made another move, went right towards the goal. They actually mark him down at the three. So first and goal at the three with 19 seconds to go in the first half. Eagle fans, fall sports are underway and soon fall will give way to winter sports. What better way to support your Eagles than with university clothing or branded items? If you want to represent your Eagle fandom in the nest, on campus, around the neighborhood, at home, or on the road, go to posteagles.com. Click on the fan section on the right-hand side, then click on School Store to grab anything and everything Post Eagles. Use the code SAVE20 at checkout to receive 20% off on all purchased items over $75. Exclusions do apply. That's SAVE20, S-A-V-E-2-0. You can also visit the campus store in the Lever Student Center on campus. They're open Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. <coughs> First and goal from the three. Two receivers right, none to the left, two tight ends, and a tight formation. And the shotgun is Wade with Holmes next to him. In motion goes one of the receivers left to right. He comes back now. Snap to Wade, fakes to Holmes, gives to Holmes. He pushes through the pile. He didn't get in. Good job by the Eagle defense to stop him at the two with 12 seconds to go. And that's the, Eagle, the Falcons' final timeout. Second and goal from the two. Holmes tried to dig his way through a massive wall of Eagles led by 45, Zachary Jones. Thirty second timeout for the Falcons. Second and goal from the two. 12.2 seconds to go, so they can't really run it. Without fear, if they don't get in, they're ne never going to get another playoff. So they're going to have to go to the air or guarantee themselves to get in the end zone. If they don't get in the end zone, the quarter will end. Which would be what the Eagles would want. It's second down. They have enough time for at least two throws to the end zone. Again, if they run, twin receivers to the right, tight end left. Holmes moves from right to left. Snap to Wade, who looks for Holmes, and a nice job blitzing. Wade is running. Wade's got to throw the ball if he doesn't get to the end zone, but he's going to get to the corner. It's a touchdown, Wade. There is a flag on the field, though, right at the 10-yard line. Is that a flag or is that a mouth guard? You know? Yet there is a holding. That is a flag, and it's holding. Holding on the Falcons with 3.5 seconds to go. I got it right. There was a flag out there. And the three-yard rush by Wade is off the board. They're going to push him back 10 yards, and this will set up a field goal for the Falcons. I don't know why they're rushing. Clock is not running. It's 3.5 three to go. Falcons, wi Eagles wisely call timeout.
So the Eagles call timeout. They trail 16 to 6. It is second down and goal after the holding penalty. Wade, uh, Wade did score on a rush, but they wipe it off because of the hold. And that will leave a field goal attempt for Mason Campbell, who's made one today. So the ball is at the 12, <coughs> excuse me, the 12 yard line. So this will probably be about a 29 yard attempt, maybe a 30. Let's see where they officially spot. It's gonna be 29 yard attempt for Campbell with the win, but swirling, he's on the far hash mark. Second and goal. Field goal attempt to end the half. Crowd stomping. Snap to Tarantino is good. Campbell behind the ball. It is up and it is good. And that's how the half will end. 19 to 6. Bentley. With the Eagles getting the ball to start the second half, they trail by 13. The defense has played much better in the second quarter than they did in the first two series of the first quarter. And the offense finally getting on the board. 19 to 6 here at halftime. We will take a two-minute break here at halftime at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury where Bentley University Falcon, uh, Falcons leads your post-university Eagles 19-6. to You're listening and watching to post-university football on the CACC Network and YouTube.com slash Go Post Eagles. Welcome back, halftime here at Municipal, in the Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut, where the Eagles trail the Falcons 19 to six. At halftime, in a good play in the first half, after that first drive where the Falcons went two plays and 83 yards, Eagles again have held their own, trailing 19 to six. Home football games to go around the post-university sports scene here at halftime, and we'll start well, first, let's tell you that the halftime is brought to you by Post University, ranked by U.S. News and World Report as having the best online graduate business programs and graduate programs for 2023. For you, Post is personal. For more information on all of Post's degree programs, to visit campus or to apply, go to post.edu. That's post.edu. Women's volleyball, well, they fell in a try match against Southern Connecticut and Assumption. They're coming off a big conference win the other night against Bloomfield College, but Connecticut's campus. In the eight total sets the Eagles played, each one was decided by five points or less. A pair of highly competitive matchups, but they lost to Southern Connecticut University, State University, three to nothing, and to Assumption, three to two. Post has fallen to one and nine on the season. Hannah Brett had a good game for the Eagles against Southern Connecticut even though they lost three sets to nothing. In the five-set thriller to Assumption, neither side would let either one get too far away. Outside hitter Tamara Radovanov notched two kills while Brant 
each tallied one to help the Eagles in that match. Unfortunately, they did lose three sets to two. The Eagles 1-9 became a string of five consecutive against Caldwell University in Caldwell, New Jersey at 6 o'clock. Heading into the weekend, the Cougars are 1-1 one one in conference play and 1-4 and overall. Men's soccer played number one Franklin Day and unfortunately fell 3 to nothing to Franklin Pierce. That's not anything to hold your nose at. Franklin Pierce has a phenomenal record having not lost in 36 games and are 51-1-2 over the last 55. Sorry, they've won 36 in a row and are 51-1-2 in their last 54 games. Franklin Pierce controlled the offensive end of the ball. They had 12 shots to post five, six to two in shots on goal, 24 fouls between the two teams. Diego Montoya Casillas earned the second shutout of the season for the Ravens, and they are three. Oh, and he is three zero and zero in net. Twenty different Eagle players saw the saw the field with three playing all ninety minutes. The Eagles today host their first CACC matchup of the season against Wilmington at Lemoy Field. That starts at two thirty, so in about fifteen to twenty minutes from now. The Eagles are 11, 11, and 6 all time against the Wildcats. Good news on the golf side. Just days after winning their first event of the year, the Franklin Pierce Fall Invitational, Post University Men's Golf swept the CACC Men's Golf Weekly Awards with senior Ethan Phillips taking home Player of the Week and freshman Braden Shea named Rookie of the Week. Ethan Phillips started off the season strong. Tying for the invite's individual title with senior Sean Margarin of Assumption University and junior Alejandro Gomez of Dominican with a score of 135. After opening up the invite with a 70, placing him in third, the Br Bowmanville, Ontario native turned in the second round best score with a 65 to, host a, to force a three-way tie at the Frank Braden Shea was the rookie of the week. He started off his college career shooting 73 in the first round before 66 in the second round for 139 overall. Help, it helped the Eagles win the event since they began competing in it in the 2014-2015 season. That was their first win in the event since 2014-2015. The Eagles returned to play Monday, September 18th in the first round of the SNHU Granite State Opener to take place at the Deaver Meadow Golf Course in Concord, New Hampshire. Round two is scheduled for Tuesday. <coughs> Women's tennis, after rain postponed their opening match of the season against AIC on Monday, the post-university women's tennis got their 2023 campaign underway at Edgewood Bath and Tennis in Middlebury against undefeated Assumption in a tense match that saw the Eagles fall four to three. In a trio of high stakes double matches where the team who takes two of the three matches earns a single point, Nat Natalia Gonzalez Ramos and graduate student Anuchia D'Souza teamed up in the number two doubles to take a 6-3 victory over Carolyn Mader and graduate student Caitlin Size for the first win for the Eagles. Chio fell 7-5 in the th number three doubles after a comeback where D'Souza and Shawden, sophomore Michaela Rosagolo and junior Megan Lombart took back momentum for post after a 7-6 tiebreaker. However, Assumption would rally with a number two singles win from Mater over Rosinolo, 6-4 and 6-3, followed by Carolina D'Souza against Gonzalez Ramos in the number five singles, 6-2, 7-6, 7-0 in the tiebreaker. Post University is right back at it on Thursday as they toast Bentley at 3 p.m. Two sides face off last year in which the Eagles swept the Falcons 7 to nothing. And that, my friends, is your look around the post-university sports scene here in Waterbury this afternoon. We'll be back after a one-minute break. We'll look around college football and the local scores and the top 25. We'll be back with you in one minute. You're listening and watching the post-university football on the CACC Network and at go and at, po and at uh, youtube.com slash go post eagles.
Welcome back to Waterbury Halftime Score. Bentley 19, the Eagles 6. Let's go around the state and around the country with scores today. Uh, UConn will host Florida International at 3.30 p.m. UConn 0-2. Florida International 2-1. and Games involving local teams. Central Connecticut trails Kent State 31 to nothing in the third quarter. That's at Kent State 31 to nothing. Top 25, the third quarter, number three, Florida State leads Boston College 24 to 10. Number seven, Penn State leads Illinois 16 to 7, start of the third quarter in Illinois. Number 14, LSU 27, Mississippi State 7, midway in Starkville. Number 15, Kansas State 17, ranked Missouri 17, midway through the third quarter in Columbia. Liberty leads Buffalo 27 to 14, start of the third quarter there. End of the third quarter in Indiana, Louisville 21, Indiana 13. Georgia Southern up in Madison, holding its own against Wisconsin 14 to 14 in the third quarter. Old Dominion hosting Wake Forest. They lead 17 to seven over the Demon Deacons. Baylor 16, Long Island University seven. The game is currently in a delay. And Ohio seven, Iowa State nothing midway through the third quarter in Athens. Busy day around college football. Also in the top 25 today, Number nine, Notre Dame hosts Central Michigan at 2.30. Number one, Georgia hosts South Carolina at 3.30. Number 10, Alabama travels to Tampa to play South Florida. That's a 3.30 kickoff in Tampa. Also at 3.30, number 16, Oregon State hosts San Diego State. Number 19, Oklahoma travels to Tulsa in a rare interstate game where Oklahoma is traveling and not playing Oklahoma State. So uh, Oklahoma travels to Tulsa. Number 20, North Carolina hosts Minnesota. Number 21, Duke hosts Northwestern. Number 25, Iowa hosts Western Michigan. Those are all at 3.30. 4 o'clock, Ohio State, number 6 in the country, hosts Western Michigan at 5 o'clock. Number 8, Washington travels to Michigan State, who fired their coach on Tuesday under unsavory circumstances. Both teams 2-0, that game in East Lansing. Number 23, Washington State hosts Northern Colorado. That's also at 5 o'clock. Number 24, UCLA, hosts North Carolina Central at 5 p.m. 7 p.m. in the most important football game of the day outside of post. Number 11, Tennessee, travels to Gainesville to play those dreaded Gators. 7 p.m. for number 11, Tennessee, at Florida. 7.30 p.m. is number 2, Michigan, hosting Bowling Green. Number 17, Ole Miss, hosts Georgia Tech. 8 o'clock, number 4, Texas, hosts Wyoming, number 13 Oregon hosts Hawaii, and in the Colorado State. Only game to complete in the top 25 was from Thursday, number 22 Miami beat Bethune-Cookman 48 to seven. Stats in the first half, quarterback Mark Wade for Bentley, 12 for 21, 118 yards and two touchdowns in the first half for Bentley, and he looked good at times. Also had some rushing plays. Had 34 yards on the ground. Vinny Holmes, 178 yards on the ground in the first half. Well on his way to over 200, but his first play of the game was a 73-yard rush. So started off in good form. Dylan Gordon had eight yards, and Abel Lopes Jr. was minus two. Receiving yards, Jonathan Oriaki, 33 yards. Navon Reed, 21. Abel Lopes, Jr. with 20. And Jack Ford with 15 for the Falcons. Rashawn Bradford also had a touchdown reception as well as Abel Lopes, Jr. For the Eagles... Simon Burkett, five for seven, eight, and a touchdown pass <coughs> in the first half. 
Nashawn Hill minus two yards rushing, Jermaine Tillery minus four yards rushing, and Simon Burkett minus 29 yards. Eagles minus 33 yards rushing in the first half. Receiving wise, Josh Tracy had three catches, Jermaine Tillery had two, those were the five for the Eagles. Tracy had 42 yards, Tillery 38, Tracy with the touchdown. Jaden Fleeting, Noriano Smith each with five tackles in the first half. Elijah Osei, the nation's leader in solo tackles with four. That's your look around the top 25, the local scene and a recap of the first half. We'll come back after two minutes. You're listening and watching the Post University Football on the CACC Network and YouTube.com slash go post Eagles. Teams taking the field for the start of the second half, 19-6 Bentley here. If you're looking at your screen, you see the trees that the camera is left on, and you see the wind just moving those trees all over the place, and that's what's really going on here. It's blowing left to right, but it, again, as I mentioned in the first half, it's blowing from the one far end zone corner across the field to the other end zone corner, so it's not a straight left to right, but the bulk of that wind is going left to right here in Waterbury this afternoon. I'm Jeff Nelson, by the way, bringing you all of today's action and all of your post-university action, your voice for Eagle Athletics. Temperatures up to 72 degrees. The sun's peaked out a little bit, still cloudy, but very windy. No uh, precipitation in the forecast at all here in Waterbury today. The Eagles coming back on the field now. Trailing 19-6, to six, they'll get the ball for the start of the third quarter. And should have some positives on their side. Five for seven after a terrible first three drives. Where seven of their ten plays went for negative yards. Their fourth drive in the first half. Right up the field. First down yardage. First down yardage. First down yardage. A couple of 20-yard plays after the touchback. And then a one-yard touchdown pass to Tracy from uh, Simon Burkett, his second touchdown pass of the season, and for Tracy, his first reception of a touchdown this season. So it should give the Eagles a momentum. They've held the Falcons to back-to-back -back field goal attempts. And field goal makes, which has helped after the first two series where the Falcons went right up and down the field. So there should be some momentum and, s and something within the Eagles to get back into this game, trailing 19-6. One score I forgot to mention in the top 25, and I don't want to get any angry letters. Number 12, Utah leads Weber State 7 to nothing in the first quarter. I know we have a lot of listeners out there in Utah. So big game out there. Interstate battle between, intrastate battle actually, between Utah and Weber. Teams ready for the start of the second half, although 
Bentley's ready to kick off with 30 seconds remaining in the second and the intermission. Mason Campbell to kick off to Tracy and Tillery standing at the five yard line. Wind is in the face of Campbell as Bentley is going right to left to start the third quarter. The Eagles will go left to right. Campbell approaches the ball, kicks the ball high in the air, and again, it just dies at the 25 yard line. Nobody goes to get it, but Tillery picks it up and is tackled after about a six yard gain. Interesting thing with the ball popping up in the air like that is it slows down, it slows down. It gives the kickoff team time to get down the field because it just dies in the air and starts spinning. Tillery let it bounce dangerously, mind you, and by the time he actually gets the ball, the kickoff team is down there. That's one of the advantages of kicking into the wind, <coughs> especially if you can get it down there. So the Eagles, first and 10 from the 25-yard line, as good as a touchback. Two receivers left, one right. Isaiah Emanuel, who's got minus two yards. No rushing game for the Eagles in the first half. And they got to figure out something. This time a handoff to Emanuel, who goes right into a wall of Bentley players again. Might have gotten a yard. <coughs> but the Eagles' inability to rush, not helping the offense. Tackles led by number 10, DePlacidito. Six foot junior out of Hudson, Massachusetts. Second and call it nine. Two receivers left, one to the right. Gives to Emmanuel, who tries to get around the corner and the Bentley speed is just too much. That's a loss of two. Sorry, that's a loss of five actually. Looking at the wrong down marker. And again, the Eagles just cannot get any rushing. The Bentley defensive line is dominating the Eagle offensive line, at least in regards to the rush play. And that sets up a third and 12, 13 even, from the 23-yard line. The Eagles have to throw here. Snap, fakes, rolls away from the oncoming pressure as they blitz. He throws on the run to Tillery, and it goes off one hand. And then Tillery punches the defensive back number seven, that's Renee Nunez, and flags go flying. Not the wisest thing by Tillery. I know he's frustrated. And then another push, and that's another flag. This one's going to be on number five, Dre Yeldell, and the Eagle offense just frustrated. <coughs> so if it was a wash before, it's probably two on one now. In regards to personal fouls, two receivers pushing back against the Bentley Falcons. <clears throat> and again, the momentum of what was going on before the first half sort of dying with a couple of penalties. Let's see if Bentley it probably should offset the receiver, the Eagle receiver, Tillery and Nunez. It's the second push from Yeldell that's Going to probably create negative yardage for the Eagles, but let's see. We've got six officials all standing at the 28-yard line talking to each other. <coughs> and let's see how good my lip reading is from about 40 yards away. It's never good when one of the officials has to throw his hat into the air. That's never a good sign for you. Let's just hope there aren't any eject ejections. There weren't really any punches thrown. It was just a couple of heavy pushes. But why take that risk? And let's see what happens. Looks like this may all offset itself. Let's see if nobody gets ejected. That's really the larger concern. Let's see. Back to back, uh, so both penalties will actually be on the Eagles, so it's going to be a 15. So as I said, each team got an, an unsportsmanlike conduct, but then the Eagles get the second one on the push by Yeldell. That pushes them back to the 10, making it fourth and a lot. <laughs> Either way, it's a punt for Christian Sheehan, who's got punts of 70, 58, and 17, 14, excuse me, 70, 58, and 14, the three punts 
for Christian Sheehan. This one with the wind at his back. Standing at midfield is number four, Abel Lokes Jr., who's got a touchdown catch in this game and fumbled a punt. He managed to regain one on the 55-yarder in the first half. Not what the Eagles wanted on their first offensive series. Three and out. Snap back to Sheehan. He catches it. Ball is squibbed off the side of his foot and goes about 12 yards. Definitely not what the Eagles wanted into the wind. A 12-yard punt. So all the good from the 70 and the 58-yard punt in the first half have been buoyed by the 17 and now 12-yard punt with the ball at the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Falcons into the wind, leading 19 to 6. First and 10 Falcons, one receiver to the left, one receiver to the right. Holmes tries to be tackled by three Eagles and finally brought down at the 20. Sorry, the ball was at the 20 seven yard line he carried it down to the 20 excuse me so first second and three as Holmes closing in on 200 yards rushing two receivers right Holmes to his right hand to Holmes again and tries to go off left tackle he does offensive line just pushing the defensive line back that should be enough for a first down and it is first and 10 from the 15 yard line for Bentley Leading 19 to 6. The Eagles got to figure out a way to hold it to a field goal. This was not the way the Eagles wanted to start the second half with a three and out, wind at their back, and then a 12 yard punt. Two receivers right. Eagles got to figure out a way to get a turnover here. And then Holmes to the left, just bullying through this offensive line. Fakes the jet sweep, gives to Holmes right up the middle. He has some space again. He'll get a couple of yards. Holmes doing a good job holding on to the ball. Gets down to the 13 yard line. 12 yard line, excuse me. So that's second and six. <coughs> Holmes ultimately gang tackled, led by Kwaku Agaman, the defensive lineman. Out of two receivers right. Holmes in the backfield again to Wade. This time they fake the jet sweep again and give to Holmes again, right up the middle again. He just bowls through and a first down, the first and goal at the one. Holmes now over 200 yards on the day. 5'10", 200 pound running senior running back out of Mansfield, Massachusetts has had a field day. That offensive line has opened holes and allowed Holmes to just squiggle his way through. Small, low to the ground, lots of leg drive and that's what's gotten the Falcons first and goal from the one. Throw this time, tipped up in the air and it is caught touchdown. A two-yard touchdown pass to Navon Reed. As Reed fell out of the backfield, everybody jumped in looking for the run to Holmes. He faked the handoff and threw the Reed. And just like that, four minutes into quarter number three, the Falcons march right down the field after a bad punt. March down 26 yards. And now lead 25-6. to six. Snap spot is wide left. No, was that good? No, oh, it was good. That was an ugly kick, but it was good. 26 to 6. With 11.04 to go in quarter number three, the Falcons have taken a 20 point lead. It's 26 to 6. Not the way the Eagles want to go. And again, it's tough to be sort of trailing and chasing points all game long. And that's what the Eagles are doing, they're chasing points. But the second problem for the Eagles offense is their, is the line of scrimmage. You know, def on defense, their line is being pushed back by the Falcon offense, and on offense, their offensive line is being pushed back by the defensive line. The few times that Burkett has had chances to throw with a clean pocket, he's been successful. That was what happened on the scoring drive. But too often, he's got somebody right in his face and is unable to get the ball off or make a play. Kickoff of the 35, Eagles trail by 20. Tracy and Tillery back this time on the 15-yard line. 
as we await the kickoff here in Waterbury. Thank you for joining us wherever you are across the country, across the state, across the world here on the CACC Network and YouTube.com slash Go Post Eagles. Kicked on the sideline. It didn't go out of bounds, so Tillery has to get it. And he breaks a couple of tackles, but he doesn't get much farther than the 12. As a great kick by Mason Campbell. Ball bounced. Tillery hoping it would go out of bounds. It never did. He had to play it as the kickoff team was getting down there. He picked it up at the four. Ended up getting maybe eight yards total. Back to the 12. So the Eagles... So first and 10 from the 12, the Eagles will start their second possession of the second half. They went three and out on the first one. one re two receivers left, one to the right, Emmanuel besides Burkett. And again, the rush, the running game has been non-existent for the Eagles today. Snap back to Burkett, looking to pass with a clean pocket, but got tipped at the line of scrimmage. He had... Yelled Dell open, but it got tipped at the line of scrimmage. And that time, the Eagles had a clean pocket, but couldn't get the ball to the receiver. Second and 10 from the 12. Second and 10. One receiver left, one receiver right. Two tight ends this time. Emmanuel behind Burkett in the offset pistol. Fakes the handoff on the jet sweep, gives to Emmanuel. This time who has a bit of a hole for a positive rush and gains six yards. That's the longest rush for the Eagles today. Six yards for Isaiah Emmanuel, who has been wrapped up all day long. Third and two for the Eagles. I actually give him eight yards, so even better than my six. Third and two from the 21, and this might be four down territory time for the Eagles. They need to get some offense moving, trailing by 20. Snap to Burkett with a clean pocket, throws it right into 99's arms. And Herve Chibamba got his left mid up there to block it as Burkett sort of telegraphed that throw. And Burkett is still out there with a total change of personnel. And back to punt now is Aiden Kane. After two good punts and two bad punts by Sheehan. Snap to Kane. He's got some time, gets the ball up in the air, and it's a wobbly high kick. It goes to Lopez, who takes it to 37. At the 40, 45, 50. Trying to break around a up back and gets taken down But there is a, is that a flag on the field? It looks like there's a flag at the 38 yard line. So a 20 yard return, but a flag at the 38 yard line. It's usually these flags go against the, the team getting the ball. So a face mask against the Eagles, that's going to give the Falcons 15 more yards. And again, you know, the old proverbial, you know, taking off your foot there. It's back-to-back -back drives where there have been personal fouls. This one, a 15-yard face mask penalty. Okay, so now they've changed the call to against Bentley. Officials not having the best of days. They've muffed the multiple calls at this point but this call is going to be against Bentley <coughs> so all that returning yardage goes right back to where he received the ball so it's first and 10 at the Falcon 40, Falcon 40. after the personal foul two receivers right two to the left and then a false start on 65 who couldn't stay in his stance that's the right tackle Brendan Dowling and that'll push him back five more yards. So 
So the ball goes to the 35 yard line, first and 15 now. Running back in the backfield is Dylan Gordon for the Falcons. Two receivers on either side. Hand off to Gordon who goes up the middle looking for a hole. He gained it all back and more and he got about four, 13 of those 15 yards as Gordon 6'2", 215 and looks bigger than that from here compared to the size of Holmes. Second and three. Quick short pass over here on the side. Makes a nice move. Gets just shy of the first down marker. That's going to be Jack Ford. He's at the, they're going to call it about a yard short of the midfield line. So it's third and one. From the Falcon 49. Third and one. Lopez to the right, Ford to the left. Tight end in the backfield. Here comes Ford on the jet sweep fake. Gives to Gordon. Gordon up the middle, gets the first down and more. Ball comes out, but he regained it back. As Gordon got the first down and fumbled it backwards to the 50-yard line, but I think that's enough for a first down. Is there a penalty flag also on the play? There is a penalty flag right in the midfield. It's holding on the Falcons, and that will push him back. So the Eagles, who had given up the first down, get a break on a hold by the Falcons. That'll make it third and 11 from the 39-yard line with looks like 8.51 to go on the clock. Let's see where they're going to put the ball. Yeah, it's right on the 39. Near hash mark, 39-yard line. Third and 11. They're going to go trip, uh, twin receivers right, one to the left. Tight end also out there, so call it trips with Gordon in the backfield next to Wade. Third and 11. Let's see if this is four downs for the Falcons. There goes Gordon out into the pass catching. He's walking, but the defense is going to be able to wrap him up, and that's a lot of five. Good play by the defense there. Gordon fanned out into the flat. Wade threw it to him over in the flat, but good tackle there by number 12, Tidian Brown, the defensive lineman. <coughs> and we're going to go to fourth down and 16 at the 34-yard line. That's going to force a punt. So penalties on the Falcons cost them there. They had a first down. Tracy back at the 25-yard line to receive the 50-yard line and then touched just past midfield. That probably should be about the 47 of the Eagles. So good field position for the Eagles, their best all day. The 47, not the 45. But the Eagles will take it first and 10 at the 45. And again, got to get some offense going, trailing by three possessions here in the third quarter. 7.55 to go here in quarter number three. Eagles trailing 26 to 6. First and 10 at the Eagle 45. Twin receivers left. One, they have nothing on the rushing side of the ball. Tracy tackled for a five yard loss. Twins to the left, twins to the right, snap back, clean pocket for Burkett for a moment, then he's tackled, sacked hard by 97, Tommy DiMatteo, the junior defensive end out of Milton Mass. He had a pocket for a second, but it closed quickly as the DiMatteo got into the backfield. And the Eagles, who had the ball first and 10 at the 45, are now back at their own 34, third and 21 from the 34. Hard to throw the ball if you don't have a clean pocket and didn't have one there for more than a second and a half. Third and 21, twins to the left, one to the right. Yell Dell. Burkett back to pass, standing on his 28. Waits for the snap, gets the snap, blitz coming. Holes, throws it up the middle, caught by Tillery just shy of midfield. Tries to get away, ball comes out. The Eagles get it back, Yell Dell jumped back onto it after gaining 14 to fourth and nine. Eagles should go for it here. And they will, fourth and nine from the Eagle 46. 
But when you have the clean pocket, Burke is able to make the throw, and he made a good one there. Fourth and nine from the 46. The Eagles need the Falcon 45. 5.55 to go in the third quarter. Snap to Burkett. Has a clean pocket for a moment. Throws it to Tracy who gets the first down. Josh Tracy caught it at the 48. Got enough yards to get the first down to the 43. And again, when they give him a pocket, Burkett's able to throw. First and 10 Eagles. And if they can throw a little bit more, they might be able to open up some rushing lanes as it's first and 10 Eagles right in front of us here at the 42-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right, Emmanuel in the offset pistol. Now in the full pistol to the right. Shotgun the Burkett, it looks to the left, fakes to the left, looks to over the middle, throws over the middle, too short for Yaldell, it bounced. As the pocket was quickly closing on Burkett. There is a flag at the 48 yard line. There's a personal foul roughing the passer on the defense. I didn't see that, so a break for the Eagles, 15 yards. And the Eagles will get an automatic first down and move to the, where are they going to go? To the 28, I believe? 27. First and 10 Eagles from the 27 yard line on the roughing the passer penalty. With just over five minutes to go in the third quarter. Twin receivers near side right. Well, the ball's in the middle of the field. So twin on the near side right, one to the left. Tight end on the right to help blocking. And it looks like Nashawn Hill in the backfield. Snap. Back to pass. Again, no time for Burkett, who stops, throws over the middle, caught on a comebacker by Tillery, and then he gets taken to the ground. He's still up, still fighting for it, gets thrown out of bounds. Let's see where they mark him off. He he was he caught the ball originally at about the 20, about the 23. Got pushed back and tackled, but I think there's another flag, and there might be another roughing the passer penalty against the Falcons. It looked like 50 got back there. And there is a roughing the passer penalty on the Falcons again, so that's another 15 yards. 54, Micey Dunton, the senior defensive end out of Boston, Massachusetts, looks to be the one back there. And that will move the Eagles another 15 yards. Well, that might be half the distance. Let's see. Wind swirling heavily here in Waterbury. Let's see where it gets marked off. They still haven't marked it off. Ball started at the 27. Did they give them the full 15? They do. It goes to the 12-yard line. So first and 10 for the Eagles inside the red zone for the second time today. Eagles first and 10 from the 12 with one receiver left. Trips to the right in a bunch formation. Nashawn Hill behind Burkett to his right in the offset pistol. <coughs> so the Eagles back-to-back -back roughing the passer penalties have moved them 30 yards in a hurry and a snap handoff to Nashawn Hill with no space and tackled by 44. 44 is Tommy Palich, senior defensive end out of Dobbs Ferry, New York, who hit Hill in the hole and again the Eagle running game not there. So as hopefully nobody collapsed over on the other side of the press box. Trips to the right, single wide receiver far side left. He caught. <laughs> that leaves to third and six on a quick pitch and catch between Burkett and Tillery. Third and six from the 10, almost assuredly four down territory for the Eagles trailing by 20. It's 26 to six. Tillery and Yeldell near side right. Tracy and back to pass. Has a second. Throws it over the middle, but overthrew Emmanuel. Has actually ended up closer to Gambino, and it was knocked away for fourth and six. Again, almost assuredly four down territory here for the Eagles. Trailing by 20, and the ball down on the 10. Eagles need the four for a first down or into the end zone for a touchdown. 
3.30 to go in the third quarter. Eagles go twins to the left. We'll go trips left now. Single receiver Yeldell to the right. Emmanuel next to Burkett. Got to give him a clean pocket to throw. Back to pass. Holds. Has a pocket. Throws it over the middle, but nobody's there. And fourth down goes incomplete as receivers were going all over the place, but not where the ball went. As they got as close as the 12, as the 10, excuse me, but couldn't get further. Falcons, first and 10 from their own 10, 3.25 to go in quarter number three. Falcons lead 26 to 6. They'll go twins right, tight end to the left, and Holmes in the backfield almost assuredly going to Holmes. Now tripped right, excuse me. Hands to Holmes, right up the middle. Gains four before taken down. It's second and six as Vinnie Holmes goes right up the middle for more yardage. Second and six, Holmes goes out, in comes Lopez. Lopez will be in the backfield next to Wade this time. He'll go trips to the near side left. No receiver right. Lopez standing next to Wade in the shotgun. Shot to Wade, who looks over the middle. Running back filters out, ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. Nicely done <coughs> to finally get in front of somebody. That's 55, Kawagu Agaman. The defensive lineman out of East Windsor, Connecticut, who got a hand on the ball to make third and six with 2.43 to go. Yeah, I mean just the third and the Eagles with an opportunity to get the Falcons off the field, trailing by 20. Two receivers stacked on the far side right, one receiver near side left. Holmes back in the game next to Wade. Shotgun. And a false start on the offensive line will push them back five yards. That handoff was going to Holmes. Don't know who the number was on that false start, but a five-yard false start penalty pushes the Falcons back to the nine <coughs> and will make third and 11 from the nine. to the right single receiver left now he moves now they just change positions it's going to be twins on both sides twins on both sides Holmes in the backfield next to Wade third and 11 from the nine snap to Wade he looks over the middle gets away from Kreefka now he's going to rush right up the middle trying to get to the first down nicely taken down there led by 22 Amir Johnson he's the first one who touched Wade and the Eagles get off the field. It's fourth and six. And the Falcons force the punt. A.J. Worsley out the punt on fourth and six. As Wade broke contain, got away from the blitz, but only was able to pick up five. He had a long way to go. Amir Johnson led the tackling brigade. Snap, block, the Eagles block it. It's in the end zone. They fall on it. It's a touchdown. It's still bouncing. They got it. That should be a touchdown, Eagles. I don't know who got in. It's a touchdown and a special team touchdown again. The Eagles do it, a block punt for the second straight week. It's Christian Matthews Bird who gets the ball in the end zone. Touchdown Eagles on a block punt and they cut the lead to 26 to 12. Don't know who blocked it, but Christian Matthews Bird recovered in the end zone, and for the second straight week, the Eagles block a punt. Last week it was for a safety. This week it was for a touchdown. And now the extra point to come, and that ball bounced around in the end zone multiple times before Bird got on it. Kick up and good. It's 26-13 on the blocked punt. And we talk about momentum. Christian Sheehan with the extra point. We talk about momentum. And every time the Eagles get momentum, here's another opportunity, a block punt. Wind at their back for at least another 245 and an opportunity to continue at a good defense of Jake Bedell and Jake Tarantino 
for the Falcons. Ball falls off the tee. Get one more chance at that before they make you hold it. So the Eagles trail by 13 now. Ball on the tee. Kane, the kicker out of the United Kingdom, ready to kick the ball. Wind at his back. Approaches, kicks, high up in the air. It spins. Let's see if they return it. It's in the end zone. He fumbles it. He's got to control it. Now he'll go to one knee as Tarantino couldn't control it. That'll bring the ball out to the 25 on the touchback. First and 10, Falcons at the 25. After going out on the last series and having a blocked punt for a touchdown, let's see what they do. Wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of Vinnie Holmes on this drive. Just hand the ball to Holmes, try to get out of the first, out of the third quarter with the wind in their face, and force the Eagles to have to go on two long drives to get back into this game. They trail 26 13 and do the Eagles. Falcons ball, first and 10 to the 25. Receivers on either side, tight ends on either side, and Holmes in the backfield. Hand off to Holmes as I predicted, right up the middle, but a nice job by the Eagles to tackle him behind the line. He might have gotten back to the line officially. But good job by the Eagles that time. 22, Emir Johnson in the backfield. And 54, Jalen Kelly, the senior out of Naugatuck, Connecticut, to hold Holmes to no gain. Second and 10. Twin receivers left, one to the right. Gives to Holmes again, just as I predicted. And he'll gain about five to the 30 where Kelly and a group also with Jaden Fleeting brought him down. We'll call it third and four and a half for the Falcons, and this may be the play of the game for the Eagles in the third quarter. If they can get them off the field and get the ball back and get some momentum, they might be in it. Trips to the right, bunched. Right up the middle goes Wade. He's going to try for the first down. He's going to get tackled short by a bunch of players. He got to the 28. He's two yards short, and now decision time for Coach Stacker, fourth and four, and he's going to go for a punt, I believe, again. He went for it in the first half on this kind of play, but the Eagles hold them on three straight plays. Again, maybe one of the biggest plays of the game. The Eagles are going to get the ball back down by 13. They just blocked the punt a minute ago. Tracy back at the 35-yard line. Let's see if they bring the house again. They're all up. Tracy's back at the 35. Worsley back to kick, standing on his own 20. Eagles have to be careful, though. They don't want to jump because that would be a first down. Fourth and two. And they wait to the end of the quarter, and that's it. You might want to think they could have called a timeout. They chose not to. That's the end of three quarters with the score. Bentley University 26, the Eagles 13, and awaiting a punt. To get the ball back, trailing by two scores, you're listening and watching to Post University Football on the CACC Network and YouTube.com at Go Post Eagles. We'll take a 30-second break and be right back with you. Start of the fourth quarter, 26-13. Bentley leads are about to punt the ball back to the Eagles here. I'm Jeff Nelson. Thank you for joining us. This fourth quarter brought to you by Post University, offering online, hybrid, and on-campus degree programs to meet your needs. For you, Post is personal. For more information on all of Post degree programs, to visit campus or apply, go to post.edu. That's post.edu. Tracy now standing on his own 25 with Worsley back to kick it at the 20. Eagles just blocked the punt a minute ago. It's up to the up back on a fake punt, and he will get the first down by a half yard. Again, gutsy call to the up back. That's number five, Tejon Vassar. Gutsy call by Coach Stacker. I'm not sure if that's the smartest call in the world, but it works. You know, you look like a genius when it works. They go for it on fourth down. Sorry, the sixth time today they go for it on fourth down, and they get it first and ten for the Falcons. Handoff, again taken down, was 
Holmes, this time for no gain again, second and 10. I understand the logic of wanting to keep the ball. What I don't understand the logic of is the Eagle offense has not done much. Why risk giving them the ball in short field position on fourth and two from within their own end zone with the wind at your back? Again, the play works, so who am I? But just saying it doesn't make much sense. The risk reward far too small. Snap on the play, fakes the handoff, we'll have to throw it away, will Wade, because the receiver was well covered by 44 Parker. And then there's a flag on the play on top of it, thrown right at the line of scrimmage. That's probably in the area of holding, or a chop block, actually. It might be a chop block. That's the initial symbol. Let's see if that's what we actually call. Chop block's going to send them back 15. So it's either third and 10 or second and 25. I push them back to second and 25. <coughs> Good defense by the Eagles, though. They flushed Wade out of the pocket. He couldn't hit that initial receiver because Ivory Parker was there. Ended up throwing it away. Let's see. They're going to push him back to 15 on the chop block. Called on number 70, I believe. That is Jake Jackson the guard and the Eagles push him back. It's now second and 25. Second and 25 from the 21, 22, excuse me. They got to get to the 47. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Holmes in the backfield. Again, wouldn't be surprised to see a steady diet of Holmes even on this play. Back to pass his way, looks over the middle. He gets away from the sack. There's gonna be a holding penalty though. And then a big hit on Wade over on the sideline. They're going to call roughing the passer. So everything's going to even out. You've got holding and roughing the passer coming. And then roughing the passer. But the officials are talking to each other. Maybe they'll pick up that flag. Let's see. Wade got walloped on the far side at the 18-yard line. Referees already called the hold. Let's see what happens here. It was second and 25. <coughs> so the play doesn't count. Hard to tell that to Mark Wade, who got walloped. But roughing the passer would have been better than the other options for the Falcons, I guess, at this point. So we're back to second and 25 again. Two receivers to the left, to the right. Trips now to the left with the tight end going over there as well. Holmes, the running back in the shotgun to Wade's left second and 25 wouldn't be surprised if he just handed off or did a draw here but they snap he fakes the handoff and here's the draw by Wade who gets nowhere and taken down looks like for a loss of one and that's going to be third and 26 <coughs> Eagles Eagles defense has stepped up here third and 26 close to 27 actually And again, as gutsy as Coach Thacker has been, it'd be surprised if he tries to push this down the field. Although, you never know, if he gets 20, he might go on fourth down. Trips to the right and then he five yards further to third and 32. If the Eagles can ever get off the field here, get the ball and get a score, this place, which has a nice crowd today on both sides for Bentley and the Eagles, will explode. Third and 32, almost a shot. Almost assuredly a draw here on third and 32, but I've seen weirder. Trips right, single receiver left, snap to Wade, who's going to throw. Has a clean pocket in time, up the middle, throws the ball. It is high. Good defense. Really no place to throw that ball as Rashawn Bradford was the intended target at the 50. Would have been enough for a first down, but he was bracketed by three Eagles. Led by number four. For Jaden Fleeting and they will punt with the wind at their back not likely to fake the punt here on 4th and 32 so the Eagles with Tracy standing on the 45 yard line an opportunity to get some momentum back good defensive stand off the fake punt they blocked the punt the last time they tried one 
Snap, back to the punter this time. Not going to get there, but he pops it up in the air short. Eagles call for the kill so nobody touches the ball. Then the Falcon player touches it at the 46, and the Eagles will have the ball in positive territory, first and 10 at the 47-yard line officially, trailing by 13, and here's an opportunity. They can get into the end zone, build that momentum. This will be a fun one here in, in the fourth quarter. Eagles right in this one right now. Around the country, number three, Florida State leads Boston College 31 to 20. Number seven, Penn State leads Illinois 30 to seven. First and 10, Nashawn Hill in the backfield for the Eagles. Snap to Burkett, fakes the hill, rolls out, rolls out, looking, throws it right up in the middle and caught at for eh, about a one yard gain, caught by number 10, D Dominico Monacon, the graduate student out of Storrs, Connecticut. Gained about a yard. The ball's at the 46-yard line, second and nine. Hill out there is the running back. Eagles go trips left, one receiver to the right. Hill in the backfield. As the Eagles at this point have foregone the running game with very little success. Let's see, third and nine, the second and nine. Snap to Burkett with time. Quick pass picked. Red and perfectly picked and down the right sideline goes the defensive back. He is caught at the 20, and that's going to be an interception for Tejon Vassar, the cornerback out of Worcester, Massachusetts, who read that play. Burkett's eyes never moved, and that's his sixth interception of the season. Didn't fake him off, and he read the play, picked it up, and there goes the momentum. Down at the 17-yard line, Burkett got back to make the tackle. after a 41 yard interception return to the 17 yard line. And the Eagles give the ball right back. Second play after the punt. First and 10 in the red zone. One receiver left and Holmes to the right. Snap, gives to Holmes right up the middle. Taken down this time as the Eagles defensive line is finally starting to impose some of its will on the offensive line of the Falcons. A two yard run to the 15. Second and two. Sorry, second and eight, excuse me, after a two yard run. Second and eight from the 15. Trips to the right. Running back is Lopez Jr. to the right of Wade. Now he goes off into the pattern with four receivers right. A quick throw to Wade. That'll be a completion this time. Nobody covering him. He gets to the 12 and taken down after a three-yard gain. It's third and four. Third and four. Third and four. Crowd's gotten quiet after that interception. Need the Eagles to need to get up. It's third and four. Trips to the left. Single receiver to the right. Holmes in the backfield will stand to Wade's left. Third and four. Tight end goes in motion. Gets tighter to the formation. Blitz comes right up the middle. Wade throws it in the air to Holmes, who gets catches the ball at the 15 and is taken down for about a one-yard loss. That mo that opens up fourth down and six as Wade avoided the blitz, was able to get the pass to Holmes, and they're gonna come out for a field goal attempt. Eagles defense holds this time. And it's fourth and six with a field goal attempt for Raymond and the wind blowing all over the place. If somehow he can miss the field goal, we'll be right back to where we were down two possessions. Wind swirling in multiple directions, but at his back. Snap, spot, kick, up, it is. That looked good, right through the middle. No, no good. <laughs> I'm like 0 for 5 calling these today. I'm not clear how the last one went in, but that one was wide. I, that looked like right through the middle. <laughs> Everybody in the press box a little shocked, but okay. Either way. Eagles get off the field allowing no points. And they'll have first and 10 with an opportunity to restart right where they were 
And again, if they could ever get into the end zone and get some points here, they've played well defensively really since the first quarter. And they have first and 10 from the 20. Need to get, need to get into the end zone. And if they can do that, that'll put the pressure back to Bentley, who's lost a pair of one-point games to start the season. Snap to Burkett. Holds, has a clean pocket, throws it into the wind, up the middle, and it is bounced. Tracy needed to come back a step to the ball. If he came back instead of kept going, he would have caught it. But throwing into the wind, that's part of the danger too, a 25-yard pass into the wind. And Tracy couldn't stay with it, but if he had stopped instead of kept going, he would have caught that ball right at the 45. Either way, second and 10. Twins to the left, one receiver to the right. Again, the Eagle running game non-existent today. Can't risk doing it, but they're going to hand it off this time. Emmanuel gets around the corner. He's got some speed this time to the 30. 33-34, first down Eagles. That's the first running first down of the day for the Eagles. And only the second real running play with significant yardage forward. So tricked them finally, got 12, 15 actually they're going to call it. First and 10 Eagles at the 35. A successful running play for Emmanuel. And again, if they can get some completions and some running, that'll open up everything else. First and 10, single receiver left, twins to the right, tight end on the right side as well. Snap, Burkett, time, pocket, steps up in the pocket, tries to get away from the rush. He will gain five, six, get out of about the 42. Looks like he gained, I'll call it 41, he gained six. Second and four as Burkett stepped up in the pocket to make a rush away from the blitz this time, similar to what Wade has been doing. Second and four. For the Eagles, 8.45 to go in the second, in the fourth quarter. Tracy in motion, gives to Tracy, who gets around and then falls, and that jet sweep is not working when the defensive line is pushing into the backfield. Five-yard loss, I'm sorry. Five-yard loss for Tracy. Pushes him right back to the original line of scrimmage. They'll call it nine, actually, so only a three-yard loss. Third and nine from the 36. Almost assuredly four-down territory for the Eagles. They got to keep pushing. They're only going to get so many possessions. Twins to the left, single receiver to the right. Emmanuel in the backfield with Burkett. Back to pass, Burkett helps with the blitz, throws it. Two, Yeldell didn't turn out of the break in time, and that'll lead to fourth and nine. Let's see what Coach Schultz wants to do here. He's going to send out the kicker and the punt team on fourth and nine with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eagles moved it on one first down, couldn't get the second. As again, they got a rushing first down, but the rushing attack has been struggling all game long. Ten players up on the line, snap, gets the ball off as the blockers come in. It pops right up in the air at the 40-45 and is caught at the 42. As a 23-yard punt, decent punt at least, it gave the kick coverage team time to get down there. But the Eagles again have to get a stop, and you might want to, you're probably likely to see a lot of Vinnie Holmes on this drive. <laughs> so, first and 10. First and 10 at the 42. Twins receivers right, one, twins to the left, actually, Holmes in the backfield with Wade, snap, Wade's gonna look to pass, look quickly over here, he threw it dangerously in the middle, but caught by Lopez Jr. at the 50. Second and two, tackled by 31, Noriano Smith, out of East Brunswick, New Jersey, and it's second and two. Twins to the left, twins to the right, Holmes in the backfield next to Wade. Snap to Wade again, who looks the pass. Quick turnaround, caught right here in front of us at the 45, enough for a first down by Bradford. On a quick turnaround, four to five yards, simple pitch and catch. 
And it's first four officially. First and ten on a couple of quick pass plays to the Falcons. Twins left, single receiver right. Holmes in the backfield, this time in an eye with the shotgun. Snap. Fakes the handoff, rolls to the right. Throws it deep down the sideline. Wide open is 18 who falls. And 18 is Tarantino, who again was wide open. And it's kind of funny how they've ran that same play five times. And every time he's overthrown the receiver by a good five yards. Whether it's down closer to the end zone or up here at this point in the field, he's ran that same play down the right sideline to the Tarantino and other receivers five times, and every time he's overthrown. Going in this direction, so I don't know if it's a win thing or a touch thing, but he's overthrown it five times. That time, no real chance for Tarantino, even though he fell down. Twins to the right, stacked, one open on the left-hand side. Fakes to Holmes, throws it quickly over here to 11, who catches the ball, pie faces the defender, and is taken down, and 11 is Jake Bedell, graduate wide receiver of North Reading, Massachusetts. Third down and call it three at the 37-yard line. You need the 34. Twins right, twins left. Holmes in the backfield, and a lot of passing on, on this drive. This time, Wade goes right up the middle, finds a hole, will get the first down and more. He's at the 30, then taken down at the 27-yard line. That's a first down. On an option play where the quarterback kept it, and Wade, who's rushed 14 times last week, rushes again for the first down. Holmes in the... Backfield. This time he gives to Holmes, who goes off tackle on the left-hand side, gains a solid six or seven yards before being brought down by 22, Amir Johnson. Don't know if there's a flag on the field. Let's see. I think there is. Is there a flag on the field? There you go. Second and five from the 22. Trips again right, single receiver left, Holmes in the backfield on second and five. Snap, throws quickly to Lopez, who catches the ball to 15 at the 10, crushes to the middle, five, into the end zone. Is that a touchdown? It's not, he's just short. Say his knee was down at the one. Was Lopez Jr. has been the top receiver today for the Falcons. Not sure who got the tackle, but first and goal for the Falcons at the one. Lots of beef have come in for the Falcons here on first and goal from the one. Under center, straight ahead is Wade. He's into the end zone. That should be a touchdown. He's standing in the blue. There we go. There's the call. Rushing touchdown for Mark Wade. His first touchdown of the season, rushing-wise, and the Eagles now trail 32-13. to 13. Extra point to come for Worsley. Excuse me, for uh, 17, that's 17, Campbell. And I'm not even going to guess. We're just going to wait for the official to make the call. I'm 0 for 5 today in guessing where these balls are going. Let's see. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it is good. I've played and watched a lot of football in my life, and I'm usually pretty good at calling these, and that looked wide right too, but they called it good, so there you go. 0 for 6 today, calling it from the booth. That's why we waited for the officials to call. 33-13, the lead back to 20 for Bentley. With 4.50 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Eagles had a couple of opportunities trailing by only two possessions. Couldn't get anything going. They had an interception and then went punted. And the Eagles will be set to receive a kickoff return from Raymond, trailing 33-13. 
Tillery and Tracy back to receive at the five. Raymond approaches the ball, kicks the ball, gets it deep, but should be play all. They're gonna let it go over their head and it goes into the end zone. Eagles after today go on a four game road trip. They're, eight, they're at St. Anselm at 3.30 next week. They're at Fairfield, Fairmont State in West Virginia, two o'clock on the 30th. They're at Pace on October 7th at noon and at Franklin Pierce on October 21st at one o'clock. Our next broadcast will be Saturday, October 28th versus Southern Connecticut State University here at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury. Pre-game 12.45, kickoff one o'clock. That'll be the final home game of the season for the Eagles, who only have a three-game home schedule this year. Handoff to Tillery on a jet sweep, and this time he gets some yards, six yards on the jet sweep to Tillery. Eagles with only three home games this year, seven road games, as they prepare to join the NE10 Conference next season, the 2024 season, where they will play Bentley, excuse me, where they will play Bentley, Southern Connecticut State, and other schools in their conference starting next season. False start on the Eagles. I'm sorry, timeout, Eagles, excuse me. Second and four. We'll call a timeout. Yep. Point it to the Eagles. Let's look around the top 25 here as we're closing in on the 3.30 kickoff. So those 12 o'clock games should be ending soon. Number three, Florida State leads Boston College 31-29 with four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Penn State a commanding 30-7 lead over Illinois. Number 14, LSU has gone final with Mississippi State 41-14. Kansas State and Missouri tied at 27 with 10 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Number 12, Utah 17, Weber State 7, Notre Dame 21, Central Michigan 7, start of the second quarter. Bunch of 3.30 games getting ready to start in the top 25. Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, South Florida, Oregon State, San Diego State, Oklahoma, Tulsa, North Carolina, Minnesota, and Duke Northwestern on a second and six for the Eagles. Snap, back to Burkett. Little pocket throws to Tillery who catches the ball right at the first down marker. That should be enough for a first down. He got to the 31, and that, the 36, excuse me, and that is a first down. And four minutes to go. Twins on either side. Emmanuel back next to Burkett. Snaps to Burkett. Has a pocket. He's going to get sacked, though, from behind by 97. Tommy DiMatteo, the junior out of Milton, Mass. He got behind and took Burkett down. And there's an eagle down as well. Face first on the turf. Crawling, and he does not look happy. That's 66. Colby Lorson Rice, the sophomore out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Sack lost eight yards. As that was Tommy DiMatteo who got the sack. Lorson Rice on his back now. Pounding the turf in pain. Takes his helmet off. I don't know what he hurt, but he is in pain off the eight-yard sack by DiMatteo. Lorson Rice still down, training a medical staff around him. Seems to be more of a leg than anything else, a leg or an ankle. They're flexing his knee. So not a head injury or anything along those lines, but Lorson Rice down after the sack by DiMatteo.
for Bentley, if, who looks like they're going to hold on to win this one. Their next two games are road games as well. They're at Southern Connecticut next week, 12 o'clock, and at St. Anselm the week after that, the 30th at 1 o'clock. Lorson Rice up, but being helped off his right leg seems to be what the problem is. And looks to be in tremendous pain now. His offensive linemen go over there to help carry him off. Signs of a good teammate to help get him off the field. As the Eagles will go second and 18 off the sack. Hopefully Lorson Rice is okay. <coughs> So second and 18, ball at the 26-yard line. Call it 19. Snap, they're blitzing again. Free rusher gets around. It's 21, and Burkett escapes. Gets to the 40, 43, and he's out of bounds. There's a flag on the field down at the 30. He escaped the blitz by 21, Lapuli Jr., but there's a flag on the field down by the 30. It looks like that's going to be on the Eagles. Probably a hold, you would expect. Waiting for the official to make the call. Offside defense, so a break for the Eagles. Do you want to go third and five, or do you want to go second and 13? They're going to go third and five. That's probably the way to go. Third and six, actually. It's four down territory anyway, so you want three plays to make 13 or two to make six. Single receiver right, twins to the left. Throws, caught, but two yards short of a first down, three yards short of a first down, caught by 18, Anthony Gambino, the wide receiver out of Manorville, New York, and now it's fourth and, oh, they moved it back to the, 44, so it's fourth and two. Eagles need a 46. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. Twins on either side. Snap to Burkett, who's got some space. Throws, almost picked off a great defensive play there by 39. That is Sante Quenzo. Freshman defensive back from Revere, Massachusetts, who read it all the way. And that is a turnover on downs for the Eagles. And the Falcons will take over first and 10 from the 44-yard line. 2.56 to go in the fourth quarter. Falcons now have the ball first and 10 from the 44. Twins to either side, snap, throws, caught, tackled at the 39. Snap, throw, and catch. That one caught by Tarantino. Tackled by Higgins. A gain of five makes it second and five. For the Falcons, they'll go twins on, twins on the right, two tight ends left, Holmes in the backfield. Next to Wade. Snap. Gives to Holmes, who goes off left tackle. He gets the first down and a couple more. Still pushing toward the uh, sideline. He goes out at the 32. And then some extracurriculars after the play as 79, 78, Joe Lociato was pushing and shoving with 55, Agaman down at the 20. 33-13, Falcons lead. Time ticking down. Under two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eagles have two timeouts, but uh, don't know if they're going to call them with the clock ticking. And first and ten for the Falcons. Receiver in motion left to right. 
Handoff to Holmes again. Holmes well over 200, probably close to 250. Breaks a tackle and is down to the 17-yard line. That's a first down for Holmes. And that's really going to put it away. Not that it wasn't before this series, but that will put it away for the Falcons. Doesn't look like the Eagles are going to call any timeouts. First and 10, receivers to each side. Holmes is over 228 yards right now. Gives the handoff again to Holmes. Holmes up the middle, keeps going, gains five, six. He's still moving. That's going to be close to another first down. And this kid has had a day. Really give credit to the offensive line. They have been... Heavily dominant and heavily pushing those yards. They give them nine and a half on that one. Holmes, six. Holmes has broken 250. <coughs> Snap. Gives to Holmes. Up the middle again, looking for six. Tries to get to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Falcons. Vinny Holmes. Over 250, his first touchdown of the season. He's more than doubled his previous output. He had 168 coming into the game. He's over 250 now. That makes this score 39-13 for the Falcons with the extra point to come. Eagle defense has played well. They really have. They've held them off as much as they could. But Holmes just barreled down and not going to guess. It's good. That'll get him the 40. That's 40 to 13. That one I actually thought was going to go in. So I finally got one right. That's the first one that looked good today. With under 20 seconds to go, the Eagles trail 40 to 13. So the Falcons are going to get their first with a 1 and 2 overall. The Eagles will fall to 0 and 3. And unfortunately, the losing streak is now going to 14 and they have a four game road trip upcoming against teams of high quality our next home game will be Saturday October 21st that will also be our next broadcast on the CACC network and go and youtube.com at go post eagles Saturday October 28th they'll play Southern Connecticut State University in an interstate battle intrastate battle excuse me here at Municipal Stadium, Waterbury, pregame 12.45, kickoff at 1 p.m. We hope to see you out here. Support your Eagles. Support college football in this area. Division II college football. Again, the Eagles will be in the NE10 Conference starting next season. That will help with recruiting, and that will help with better play. But the Eagles 20 seconds away from falling to 0-3. The Falcons 20 seconds away from going to 1. Kickoff high in the air. They'll let it bounce in the end zone. That's a touchback. And see if the Eagles just come out and take a knee. The Eagles look like they're going to go victory formation and just take the knee. But let's see. Doesn't look like they're going to go for the old triple reverse. Kneel down to close it out. Burkett takes the knee, and that'll do it. So, unfortunately for the Eagles, for the 14th time in a row, they've lost at the Division II level. They fall to 0-3 on the season. The Falcons from Bentley move to 1-2. and two. Eagles will play next week at St. Anselm. Start of a four-game road trip. The next home game will be Saturday, October 28th, versus Southern Connecticut State University here at Municipal Stadium. Pre-game 1245, kickoff at 1. I know that's uh, five weeks away, but keep that on your calendar. Hopefully you get out there. Teams line up at... Midfield. Right away they were down 7 to nothing on a two-play 
drive led by a 73-yard run by Vinny Holmes. The Eagles were never able to catch up. They got to within they got to within 10 a couple of times, and then 13 in the third quarter with possession, but could not. Excuse me, 13 in the fourth quarter with possession, but could not take it any further than that. Well, that'll do it for us here at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury. Bentley moves to one and two. The Eagles move to zero oh and three. The game brought to you by Post University, offering online, hybrid, and on-campus degree programs to meet your needs. For you, Post is personal. For more information on all of Post's degree programs, visit campus or to apply, go to post.edu. That's post.edu. Eagle fans, if you're looking for the latest in university clothing and branded items, if you want to re represent your Eagle fandom, go to posteagles.com. Click on the fan section on the right-hand side, then click on school store to grab anything and everything Post Eagles. Use the code SAVE20 at checkout to save 20% on all purchased items, over $75 exclusions do apply. That's code SAVE20, S-A-V-E-2-0. You can also visit the campus store and the Lever Student Center on campus. They're open Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Jeff Nelson. We'll see you next time on Saturday, October 28th. The final score, Bentley University 40, Post University 13. Drive home safe, everybody. Thank you.